Hey guys, hi Kenny, Joe Beth, Karen, Cynthia, Barbara, good morning. Marvelous Monday, as Julie would say. <laughs> hi, Kat. Kat Ann messaged me. She was so thrilled with that you sent had me send her that book that uh, Melody gave us. Yeah, she was thrilled. Hi, Skinny Cat, Nancy, Mira, Karen. Hi, Desert Nana, Rose, 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 <laughs> Paula W, Anna, or Ann. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Tess. Thank you, Sean D. I need something good. Oh, are you having a bad day? It, well, if you're if you're in the UK, then uh, I guess your day is you know well into. <laughs> Hi, Bacola. <laughs> So I thought we would do, I will do some book talk and then maybe we could maybe look at maybe doing something here, look at something in this book, or I might work on my Inktober. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, everybody keep Tez's mom uh, in your prayers. Praying the doctors have a lot of wisdom and guidance, Tez. Hi, Karen. Hi, Christine. Uh, she might, you know, it, you know, she it's uh she's 12 hours ahead, so she needs her rest. Hi, G. Sean. Let's see who else am I missing here? Donna, Elizabeth, Spooky House of Books. <laughs> oh, some names just tickle me. You're welcome, Tez. Arlene. So uh, if you're just joining us for the first time on the show or if you're watching the recording, uh, I take a few minutes. I, my show usually starts at 9 a.m. Eastern. It's 8.35 now. I come on a little early to say good morning to people, chat with them for a little bit, and uh, see how everybody's doing, how their weekend was. So if you don't want to hear the chit-chat or you're not able to be here in the live chat, just slide that little bar. <laughs> uh, but we do hope, you know, that people will stop by if they can. Try to stop by. Hi, Julie Topaz. Yep. Happy Marvelous Monday to you, too. Um, now, it doesn't take me long to get through some books, John. <laughs> doesn't take too long. I'm not going to read them all out loud. <laughs> I just give a little synopsis. And we'll pick a couple. Like, these are two our art books here. And Well, this one is two. And I think I actually think I have this one. I think I bought it twice. I have to look in my uh, stacks. But uh, it's it's so good. <laughs> I love these um, uh, Imagine Effects books. So <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Yvonne. So uh, Kayla. Kayla, are you the Kayla that sent me? Are you the Kayla in Alabama? Kayla, are you that Kayla? Well, I have some happy mail from the Kayla in Alabama, but I'm not sure that's you. <clears throat> Hi, well, Robin, oh, you're not? Okay, well, there's a different Kayla in Alabama that sent me something. I'll show that in a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, Robin loves reading. Good morning, Robin loves reading. <laughs> let's see. I said hi to Ro, Karen. So, uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. I hope you had a, some kind of a creative weekend. Hi, Darla. Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, everybody has things going on. We stop by and we get to, you know, recordings as we can. 
you know, it, it doesn't hurt my feelings when people can't be here if they have to watch a recording because there's a lot of shows. Like I said, every morning I get up and I have notifications in my YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, reminder or whatever notification. I have 50 every morning from, diff, you know, and it's not always the same 50. It's because just whenever people uh, post a video and there's no way we can watch all of them, especially live. So I appreciate everybody being here as they can be here. So let's see. Hi, Star. Came across Edgar Allan Poe color book. Do you have? I have. Yeah, I have a couple of them. I gave one away. I have the same one I gave away, but I have I have two, Sean. Let's see if I can. <clears throat> I gave one of these away last week. And then I have um, this one too. These are the two that I have. Yeah, the uh, Jade Summer. Which one are you? Which one do you have, uh, Sean? Now, will I get to coloring in them? I don't know. I have been work. I did work in my Poe book over the weekend, uh, and it's coming along. I have I have a big chunk of it done. I finished all the uh, text gluing. Uh, I did some more backgrounds and some additional little, you know, do lollies as we were calling it, you know, faux ephemera and stuff. I put a lot of that in. I still have to ink all the edges of the text. Uh, so I made a big, I made a big chunk in the, in the uh, Poe book. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to wait and just show it to you when I completely finish it. Let's see. Gaga. Hi. Uh, Elizabeth, I said hi, Elizabeth. Who else am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing. I was looking at the black and red cover one. Yeah, I did a flip of it last week, Sean. Um, hi, Mama Four. Let's see who else. Trying to catch up on everybody coming in. Got my complete tales. Of poems. Oh, you ordered? Okay, good. You got the book of uh, all his works, uh, Little Sister Cheryl. Hi, Terry L. Hi, Diana. Art Therapy, Mama Megs. Um, oh, well, well, thank you, uh, Fancy. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> One of these I got to get done. I, I need to do a face to face soon. I have to, you know, reset up everything and I have to have a project, you know, because when I do a face to face, you can't see what I'm doing. I don't do the multi camera thing. So um, if I do a face to face, I usually do my uh, cameo silhouette. I cut things out so you can kind of watch me do something. Uh, you know, that you can see from kind of, you know, when my face is in the camera. Uh, oh, thank you, Sean. Yeah, thanks, guys, for the thumbs up. Hi, Stephanie. Yes, I know. We love our books, Diana. <laughs> well, you got to eat, Christine. You got to eat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... I got these mysteries. I got these books last weekend and, and this one. I got those last weekend at Barnes and Noble. I didn't go, I didn't uh, go up to Denise's uh, this weekend. And then I got this one at Amazon and I got these three at Books a Million over the weekend. So I just thought I would just do a whole, you know, book haul thing. You're not sure. <laughs> Robin, I'm not sure how I feel about books. <laughs> well, you better love them since you uh, read. How What are you up to now for the year, Robin? How many books have you read this year? Robin also uh, does uh, book reviews. She does book, professionally reviews books. So, um, yeah, this one is the one I start, I've started this one. Well, actually, I've, I, I love to read the intros. I read the... I read the, uh, you know, the flaps. I read the back. I read the prologues. I read the acknowledgments. I read all of it. I read the, you know, I even read, <laughs> read the beginning. Look, see, I started this one. Just, uh, I've read the uh, intro here, the acknowledgments here. I read that. This one I've read 
uh, I don't think I read anything in this one yet. This one, I've, I'm up to page, uh, I've, I'm up to page 13. I just started this one yesterday. I just read a little bit in this one. And I really like this one. Have you read this one? Yes, there's another Flow magazine. And I'm looking for my, uh, the Flow book of Paper Lovers is out, but my, my Books a Million doesn't have it yet. Um, Barnes and Noble up in, um, Denise's might have it. I'm just, I'll just wait. It'll come to my Barnes and I mean, my books a million, the flow book of paper lovers. Yeah. The big, you know, the big thick one of paper lovers. Anyway, Robin, I'm really liking this so far. Uh, and you know, Nicholas Meyer, he, uh, let's see, he did, I think he did the screenplay for time after time. Y'all remember that movie? I think that's what it was called time after time. It's it's an older movie, older old for probably most of you. Um, he, I'm not sure what he did. Did he direct The Wrath of Khan? So he's a director, screenwriter. He, you know, he's he's out there in Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, um, no, none of these are for Hubster. These are all mine. I always offer, say, Hubster, do you want me to buy you a book? Although he'll probably look at this one. He'll probably look at this magazine. But no, these are all mine. <laughs> Hubster reads mostly nonfiction. He likes biographies, history. He doesn't read fiction, really. He just, he just would rather read history and biographies. That's Hubster's thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So anyway, this is really good. Apparently he's written a couple other ones. I think he wrote a, a Sherlock one in the seventies, another one in the nineties, and then this one. So I haven't read the other two. So <clears throat> hi, faithful mess. Oh, you missed my, uh, I can't go back. Uh, Robin uh, it messes up my chat. When I scroll back, just it's, cut and paste it or say it again. Just say it again, Robin. Um, let's see. Who else am I missing? Um, but anyway, so I'm, I started this one, this one, this one right here is a cozy mystery. Uh, I read a cozy mystery every now and then, uh, where it's, you know, it's, you know, a bookshop, a tea shop you know, um, a library, something, you know, like the Hallmark Mysteries. It's kind of like that. Oh, um, well, I missed it then, Robin. Sorry, I missed it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I, I do like a cozy mystery every now and then. And that's what this one is. Jen McClinley. I, I don't know if I've read one of hers before, but it's a library lover's mystery. So she has a quite, she has a few in her series and I haven't read them. Um, let's see here. How many are in this series? So I try to buy them in hardback because it's so much easier for me to read. Let's see. She has, it looks like eight, eight in the library lovers mystery series. Then she has a cupcake bakery mystery series. It looks like she's got about 10 in there, 12. Hat Shop Mystery. So I don't think I've read any of hers. I read um, Laura Childs. Laura Childs got has about I don't know four different. Uh, she has she has a tea shop. She has a scrapbook shop. She has something else. She, anyway, Laura Childs is usually the one if I read a cozy mystery. So yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, I don't think I've read any of Jen's. So this will, you know, we'll see how that goes. But again, all, now all the ones previous to this, the other seven or eight that are in this series are all going to be in paperback. And when I say paperback, I don't mean like, like this kind of paperback. I mean, little tiny paperbacks. And those are just not fun for me to read at all. The, the print is way too tiny. I can do it, but it's not enjoyable. Hi, Shauna. It's not enjoyable to read those tiny, tiny prints. So if I I try to get the hardback. So like Laura Child's got a new tea mystery out in, in hardback. Of course, it's more expensive. And I know I could go to the library, but, you know, I don't mind buying the books. What's, the, uh, what's that saying? Uh, buy books if there's anything left, buy food. <laughs> not quite that bad, but yeah. I've always loved books. I've always loved reading, always. 
since I could learn to read them. Grandma taught me how to read before I was in kindergarten. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, see now I don't I don't mind a thriller and I don't mind suspense and I don't mind uh but I don't like um I'm not really into like the like let's just say like the movie Halloween, chop 'em up. I don't like those kind. So I don't I don't read chop 'em ups, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, so anyway, hey Jean, how you doing? How's the knitting going, girl? <laughs> How's the knitting going? If I see Scoobs come in, she sent me a couple pictures and email. I'll show y'all some because Scoobs is apparently not on any social media at all. She comes here. So she sent me a, and, and Janet, she sent us a couple of uh, her drawings. I'll share. Well, I'll share them anyway, whether she comes in or not. But I was kind of hoping she'd be here. Um, making progress on Tales. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jean's working on. She's been knitting. She's she's dissed us. She has just completely dissed us and <laughs> is just knitting now. Uh, and, uh, so one of these days she'll get back to her watercolors. And, um, and and hopefully, Jean is still, you are still planning on doing the uh, streamathon, the New Year's streamathon, Jean. Are we still on for the streamathon? Are we still on for the streamathon? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, Robin. Oh, oh, Robin, that number. Okay, so Robin, the number you posted was how many you'd post the number again, Robin. I did not even understand why you put that number in. <laughs> you were telling me how many books. Okay, 449. Robin has read 449 books this year. Sorry, Robin. It just now dawned on me what the number was for because I asked you. I asked you. Uh, yeah, we won't see Jean until the New Year to the uh, New Year streamathon. <laughs> I'm gonna work on this coming weekend to get sign up spots ready. Okay, well, just plug me in any any time, Jean. Any you know, any morning, you know, any any time in the morning, whatever works out. <laughs> okay, sorry, Robin. <laughs> I didn't get figure it out. I was like, what's that number? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, let me tweet real quick, guys, and we'll get started. And if I if Scoob comes in, I want to show her stuff. If she, you know when she's here, otherwise I'll just show it anyway. But I really want to show her her, her stuff because she's not on any place where we can see her social media. Hi, Liz in Oklahoma. Oh, you're in Russia. Oh, okay. You know, Liz, okay. I thought you were. I thought you were in Oklahoma. <laughs> Well, welcome, Liz. Yeah, okay. Let me tweet real quick, guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's see. Coffee and art in the morning <clears throat> live. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's put some little. Do I have my little coffee? Where's my little artist girl? Oh, there she is. Um, book day. Let's see. Let's find some little pictures of some books. Well, I don't know where those books are. Okay. Oh, let's see. Lincoln profile. Let me put a picture. All right. Hang on, guys. I'm not looking at chat for just a second. I don't like to tweet too early. So let's see. Let's get a picture. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, oh, Diane's from Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. You got to find some time. Like, and I said this before. Hubster and I read at night. Well, when I say night, <laughs> it's probably early evening for people. Um, you know, after dinner, we we chill and read. We chill and read. Um, and Hubster goes, he goes to sleep fairly early because he gets up at 4, 430 every morning and, and works out and jogs or walk slash jog. Uh, he does that every morning. So he gets up really early. Um, I can get up that early, but don't talk to me, have my coffee, you know, 
<laughs> but um, so I sometimes after we turn out the lights, I'll turn on the iPad and watch, you know, a couple of videos, try to catch up on some YouTube videos or something like that. But we read we read every day. Well, we try to. I can't say we read every single day, but we try to read every day. You heard of Kathleen because I'm um, from where she was born. No, I don't know if I know Catherine Cookson. You'd have to tell me. Um, you'd have to give me a. Is it an author? You have to give me a book. Give me a book. <laughs> on it. So anyway, um, yeah. So we'll get started. I'll go through these books and um, hi, seeking my crafty tribe. <laughs> hi, Penny girl. Who else am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing some people. I'm not trying to miss anybody coming in. Uh, hi, Teresa. Let's see who else. <clears throat> How old what, uh, Liz? What are you asking? How old what? I hope you're not asking how old I am. <laughs> uh, hi, Cynthia. Kim. <laughs> Let's see who else. Barbara. <laughs> Light and Laughter. That's such a fun name. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'll be looking. At, oh, a few things here. If you want to talk to me, put it in caps. I won't think you're yelling at me. Hi, Melody J. Uh, did I say hi to you, Arlene? Uh, Angie. Who else am I missing? Blue Blood. <laughs> Good morning. Are you new here? Welcome. Uh, let's see. So put it in caps if you're talking to me. Uh, don't put it in caps if you're not talking to me. Yeah, there you go, Julie. <laughs> uh, make sure at the top of the chat list, the chat screen, you have live chat selected. Live chat, not top chat, because you won't see all the chat unless you have live chat selected. Also, if things start getting fuzzy or anything, make sure to check your little wheel and make sure you're at 720 or 1080p because something can glitch it back to 144 and you're going to have a fuzzy show. So, you know, just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, I think that's pretty. Oh, and, and yes, and the thumbs up. Thank you, Faithful Mass. The thumbs up. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thumbs up. The more thumbs up I get, the, I'm happy to do giveaways. <laughs> okay. But y'all know I do giveaways regardless. All right. So let's go ahead and let me show you the books here um uh, that i got and i think i sh i might have shown just shown these uh last week but we didn't talk about them I i'm not even sure so i'm going to show you the magazines these two are art books and then these are my mysteries so we'll go ahead and let's just make some space here and i might oh and i i do have a couple other things i want to show my inktobers up to let's see that glare is bugging me let's put something under there um I do, I want to show my uh, Inktober so far. We are up, today is day 21. Uh, I do have a couple extras in my Inktober, like I did two Frankensteins that are pre, uh, that I did before Inktober started. I have my Poe drawing, which I think I'm going to post my Poe drawing, which y'all have already seen anyway, but I think I'm going to post my Poe drawing uh, on the 31st. So I'll probably just save him for the 31st, but I'll show it. Well, let me show this real quick. Speaking of Poe, so um, Ka Ka Kayla and, uh, no, Katie. I'm sorry. Her name's Katie. I don't know why. I guess I saw Ka Kayla here and I thought it was Katie. Okay. So Katie in Alabama sent me these over the weekend. And I have a couple of these. I think I have, um, I have um, Mona. I have Mona. So she sent me these, these are bookmarks and stickers and they're from the uh, Unemployed Philosophy Guild are the ones that put these out. We've talked about them before because I have a few of these and I, and I might have Salvador Dali, but I don't have uh, Bob Ross. So how they come, I took one out of the plastic. Um, Bob Ross, so they're like little cards, right? They're like little cards. They have a little uh, bit about Bob Ross or whoever on the back. And then they come with a sheet of stickers that have to do with <laughs> that have to do with that person. So like these are all Bob Ross stickers. Look at this one. 
<laughs> air. Good luck. Talk to the tree. Make friends with it. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And then a couple of his little paintings. His little happy squirrel and happy tree. Um, I wish you happy painting. Make some happy little clouds. So that's the Bob Ross. <laughs> so Katie sent, um, sent this one here. This Well, she sent all these. I'm going to show them all. I know they're so cute, right? And I put them in my journals and um, but I don't glue them down because I like to move them around. So like if I'm using a specific journal that I'm really attached to at the moment, I kind of use them as bookmarks. So I put them in journals that I'm using at the moment so they can travel around in different ones. And then I'm going to open them all up here just so y'all can see them all. <laughs> So let's see. Hi, Ian. It's the company that makes the, it is the company that makes the puppets. The finger puppets are made by, by them. Oh, I don't have a tag on here. Is there a tag? See, I took them out of the package, so there's no tag on them. There's no tag on my finger puppets. Okay, so Ian said it's the same ones that made the uh, finger puppets. <clears throat> All right, so let's take out uh, let's take out Mona, and they come with an envelope too. It comes with a belly band. This is an envelope that uh, so because they're they're actually cards, right? They're cards, and then on the back it talks about Mona. There, of course, y'all know Mona's my muse. I won't go into the whole story about why she's my muse, but um, so anyway, there's there's Mona. And then here's some uh, some of the stickers from her little frame. Just some things that, you know, could go along with the painter, like a little paintbrush and stuff like that. So there's that one. And then here's Poe. Let's open Poe. Poe might, uh, well, I was going to say, maybe some of these stickers could go in my Poe book. And again, if you weren't here a little while ago, I talked about how I have my Poe book. Um uh well, i worked on my po book this weekend it's really coming along i may may have maybe two more hours in it but i did finish all the strips all the text on the parchment well faux parchment tea dyed paper um i did all the strips on that and uh i put a lot of do lollies <laughs> in there and uh okay how did liz time musical scrapper how did Liz time out Jean? Oh, she was timed out. Oh, okay. So how did Liz time out Jean? Oh, okay. Well, we don't want... Uh, oh, it's... <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jean. <laughs> I got it. I got it, Jean. Thank you. Um, okay. So <laughs> Thanks, Jean. Okay. So anyway, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Here's the little Poe. And again, it's a little card write up about them on the back and um so they're quotable notables from the unemployed philosophers guild so there's that and then here's some quotes hopefully y'all can kind of read some of them <clears throat> so there's that one so let's go to the next pile these so they stick together so thank you katie in alabama I don't know that she's ever here. I, I don't she I think she said in the email that she's not here. She just watches recording, so all right. So then here is saw the door dolly, the stickers. Let's take this all out. So now here's Salvador. Of course, I have tons of books on Salvador Dolly. I love surrealism. I know a lot of people don't, but I like I like trying to find meanings in things and symbols and stuff. So anything that has symbols and I'm always trying to figure that stuff out. Uh, let's see. Hi, Mitz. Karen Kamor. Who else am I missing? Thanks, everybody. Kim. So here's some Salvador Dolly. Some of his quotes. Hello, Dolly. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, there's that one. Then this one is Leonardo. This one got a little bent. Oh, it doesn't really matter. This one's Leonardo. 
too bad. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead. This one, the, the envelope, I, it doesn't matter if the envelope got uh, wrinkled because I'm not mailing them anyway. I just leave the belly band on them. So here is Leonardo with some of his inventions. Cameron actually built one of those. I don't know if I still have it in the bedroom. Do I still have it up on the shelf? I'm not sure. But he built that from a kit when he was about nine i don't remember he built a long time ago but i have it up on a shelf in the other in the in the kids mural room so here is uh leonardo da vinci quotes i'm just kind of reading them myself of course there's uh mona did i tell y'all I, I have a huge poster of mona on the back of my door the door you know my main door that goes in and out of the room and uh, <laughs> the first day I put up Mona on uh, on the back of the door, because I don't have any wall space, so I taped her up to the back of the door. But she was on sale at Michael's. She's like regularly twenty dollars, and they were all the posters were on sale for about six bucks. So I got a big, huge poster of Mona, and I taped it to the back of my door. And then I, and I was in my room working and working and I had my door closed. I was probably doing something I didn't want the cats in. So the door closed and I looked up and there was a person standing there. I jumped. I jumped like, oh my gosh, who's standing in my door? Because it's a full size head and, and chest of Mona, you know. <laughs> and so I, I jumped. I went, oh my gosh, there's somebody standing in my door. And so now I'm used to her. So now she's not freaking me out. <laughs> So, anyway, oh, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm not seeing anything for me. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put this one on the bottom because it's shiny. I'm trying not to have the glare. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk about now. I've shown I did do a flip of the, a little quick flip of this one and talked a little bit about this one, but I thought maybe we could look through these, maybe talk about some of the projects in these two books. But let me talk about my uh, mysteries stack here first. So this one is called the bookshelf, the bookshop, Penelope Fitzgerald, who she passed away in 2000. And I got it for $5.98. I take it, I take the bags, like if it's stuck on the front, I put it on the back. <coughs> so anyway, um, I'll just read what it says here on the back. In 1959, Florence Green, a kind-hearted widow with a small inheritance, risked everything to open a bookshop, the only bookshop, in the seaside town of Hardborough. By, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. By making a success of a business so impractical, she invites the hostility of the town's less prosperous shopkeepers. By daring to enlarge her neighbors' lives, she crosses Mrs. Gam Gamrock. Gamart, the local arts lady. Um, Florence, Florence's warehouse leaks, her cellar seeps, and the shop is apparently haunted. Only too late does she begin to suspect a truth. The town lacks a bookshop. A town that lacks a bookshop isn't always a town that wants one. So, yeah, and I guess they made a picture movie out of it. I never heard of the movie. Has anybody seen the movie? And I never even heard of the movie, The Bookshop. So I don't know when it was out, when it was made, because the book came out in, let's see, 1978. It came out in 1978. You said it correct, but it said like Burra. Hard, hard, okay, so let's go. Hard Burra. Burra? Like Burra? <laughs> Thanks, Sean. My UK people. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'm, I really want to read this. Um, it was just on a table of like clearance stout books. So that's why I picked it up. I didn't go looking for this one. It just kind of found me. And um, so I don't know. Did, has anybody seen that movie? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so anyway. And again, this is one of the cozy mysteries. Jen McKinley, Kinley. And uh, I have read a few pages just to get my, you know, get it going there. Uh, but the, in the Library Lovers Mysteries, there's like 10. 
And um, I've not read any of hers that I know of. I might have years, some years back, but I don't re recognize it. So, um, and the reason I got this, her newest one, the older ones are all in, all in the small paperbacks. And those are just not fun for me to read. I lend because they're such a small type. So I try to get the hardbacks because the type is bigger. And uh, so I've read a lot of different cozy mystery library, bookstore, tea shop, different ones. Uh, but I don't recall reading Jen McKinley. So uh, she's getting ready to get married in this one. So maybe I picked it up at a good time. Hi, let's make a mess. Let's see. Uh, I have a, the movie on my want to watch list. First heard about it a year ago. Okay. Thanks, Arlene. Yeah, I never heard of it. Not to my recollection. I mean, it might have skipped past me at some point. Okay. Then this one is The Adventure of, a, of the Peculiar Pro Protocols, Nicholas Meyer. And he is, and I said it earlier, but some people may not have been here. Um, the author of The 7% Solution. He's written, I think, two other Sherlock Holmes books, one in the 70s. And then I think The 7% Solution was in the 90s. And... Um, so it's like, it's like from Watson's point of view, okay? It's from Watson's, it's adapted from the journals of Watson. Um, so it's kind of from his point of view. That being said, what really got me, go, really got me, um, hooked me was uh, the intro. So, or I think he calls it a word of explanation. And um, so the author writes that how he started the book. And so it's, it's really, it grabbed me right from the beginning. And Nicholas Meyer, he was, he was, um, I think the screenwriter, and I might have this wrong, the screenwriter, not the, not the, the thing, but the, what he did on, I think he was a screenwriter for time after time. Y'all remember that movie it was such a cool movie. How many of y'all seen that? Uh, Mary Steenberger, I think, is that how Steenberger, Mary Steenberger, and I forget who was uh, else was it. Was it um, the guy that played Superman? Yeah, who was it? What was his name? Uh, Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeves was uh, in it. Anyway, it was a good movie back in the thing in the seventies. Yeah, thanks, uh, Christine. It was back in the seventies. Anyway, I think he was the screenwriter for that. And then he was also, I think, either the director, the screenwriter, something on the Wrath of Khan movie. So you can look him up. But anyway, um, and I, I've been, well, how I found it is I've been seeing this advertised all over Instagram, all over. I mean, I, I, I mean I'm sure he's paying for the ads, but it, I, I came across this on Instagram. And, and I kept seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. So when I went to the bookstore last weekend, I picked up this one, this one, and this one. And then I had a picture. I took a picture of it, a screenshot. And I asked the girl, I said, I couldn't find this one. And I said, do you have this one? She goes, let me see. So she asked somebody and they said, it's, it just came in on the, on the truck. Hang on, let me turn my fan here. Get some air blowing on me. Um, and so she went to the back and pulled it off the cart that had just come in. So this just came in. And yeah, what's on Amazon too? Oh, this one, the bookshop. Yeah, I'm sure all these are on Amazon. But I try to, you know, I try to, I buy a lot of books on Amazon. But I also like to buy from my bookshops, my bookstores. Hi, Gail. Kim L, who else have Nichols? I know I'm missing. Hottie Popo. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, let's see, Gary's. <laughs> Pacola goes, hey, Hottie. <laughs> I bet you get that a lot, don't you, Hottie Popo? Um, <laughs> so anyway, I... Um, I did, uh, I got this one on, they had just got them in at Barnes and Noble last weekend and I'm really enjoying it. So this is my one I'm reading right now. Well, when I say that I am always reading probably, oh, five to 10, five to 10 books and I can read multiple, like I can't, I wouldn't want to read these two together. Okay. I wouldn't want to re be reading two books about Sherlock at the same time. 
or two books about a bookshop library at the same time. But as long as they're different, like I can be reading one, I could be reading a Sherlock, I could be reading a bookshop, I could be reading a history book, I could be reading, you know, an archaeology book, I could be reading, as long as they're all different. Um, one or two, you know, a biography depends on how close they are. If they're like, uh, like I'm reading, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, what's his name now? It's not coming to me. And I have his, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking around here. Oh, well, I can't think of it. Anyway, I can read, I can read a couple biographies as long as they're like not two men at the same time period or, you know, or two women in the same time period. <coughs> as long as they're different enough, I can keep them sorted in my mind. So I'm constantly reading a bunch of different books at the same time. You got the Nicholas Meyer book from the review site where I get most of my books. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go, Robin. You, Robin has insides, inside connections. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm reading now. This one is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Anna Waterhouse. Again, Mycroft and Sherlock called The Empty Birdcage. I just read a couple. I, I read the intro. I, I know I read the intro. But um, so anyway, let's see. It is 1873 and the economics of Europe threatened to crumble. Mycroft Holmes, that's Sherlock Holmes's brother, finds himself in service to the crown once again. A distant relative of Queen Victoria has been slain by the Fire 411 killer, a serial murderer who leaves no mark upon his victims, only a mysterious calling card. Meanwhile, Sherlock has already taken it upon himself to solve the case as his interest in the criminal mind grows into an obsession. Mycroft begrudgingly allows Sherlock to investigate as Ian Lynn, the woman he is still in love with, needs his aid. Her fiance has been kidnapped and the only man who might know his, fa his fate is a ruthless arms dealer with the reputation for killing those who cross it. Mycroft persuades his friend Cyrus Douglas to help find the young man, but Douglas himself is put in harm's way. As Sherlock travels the country on the hunt for the fire for 11 murder, both he and Mycroft will discover that the greed of others is the root of the evil they are trying to unearth. Now I'm, I'm kind of interested to see because Mycroft does not like to go out. He does not like to leave his house or his apartments. He doesn't like to leave or he just only he'll go to his club, but he doesn't like to travel. So I'm kind of curious to see how this one works out. You know how this one works out. Okay, so those are my uh, four mysteries that I got. Well, and I'm not sure how much the bookshop is a mystery. Uh, it could just be a, a small town. You know, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. So I got those. Then, oh, let me show you this real quick. I picked this up. I picked this, um, these day spring. Now, this is funny. I'm just going to give you all a warning on this. That day spring, you know, they sell Christian books, Bibles, Bible journaling supplies. Y'all know I, I shown y'all the little Bible kit things that I got on clearance a couple months ago. So I'd never, I didn't know they had a magazine and I was looking real. The reason I came across it was because I was looking really hard on the shelves for the flow paper lovers book, the actual book, the thick, small, thick book of paper. And so it wasn't in the obvious, and sometimes it's not in the craft section because it's a book of paper. It can be in different places sometimes. So I was going through very uh, succinctly through the stacks of magazines trying to find that flow book. Well, I came across this. So they it may they may have had Dayspring may have had these magazines for a long time, and I just never came across them. Um, <laughs> okay, Kim. So. Um, Anyway, I came across this and I said, oh, I've never seen this before. And what it had, what attracted me to is talked about the Bible journaling. So I said, OK, so uh, let me look at that. So I looked it up and it had all these articles on Bible journaling. OK, so they had a lot of articles and then they had these little cut out um, little prayers to share, little bookmarks and all this stuff. And I said, oh, this, uh, this might be good. I can send some of these prayers out and these little bookmarks out and. You know, I said, oh, then, and then plus I have all this stuff on the Bible journaling, right? Anything that has to do with any kind of art, y'all know we love it. 
And then I said, oh, look, they have another one. So they, you know, this must have been last month. So I got them both. <laughs> the guys, I, I know this happens occasionally. It's the exact same magazine with two covers. It's the same magazine. Learn to Bible journal. Learn to Bible journal. Page 36. Feel the joy of Christmas. 20 tear out cards. It's the exact same Christmas magazine. Yes. So mom's getting the other one. So I'm going to send one to mom. So I don't know if mom's here watching from afar, but anyway. So I'm going to send one to mom. <laughs> what? The exact same magazines with two covers. Yeah, tricky, right, Jean? Tricky. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and I didn't really pay attention. I just saw, oh, Bible journaling. Oh, here's another one with Bible journaling. <laughs> so I bought them both. So mom's getting one of those. Okay, so let's see what else do I have here. All right, let's look at this. And then I, mean, I got to pay. I, I need to. I know I write a lot of stuff down. I take pictures of things to try to, you know, kind of remember. Let me. Let's see. I just noticed that my wood grain is a little. There we go. My I can tell how straight my camera is by that wood grain. <laughs> uh, let me show you this one real quick. No, we'll get into those. I think I have this. I think I already bought this. Again, guys, I would have bought it like maybe six months ago. And it's still out. But I think I have this one. Display until January 2020. But it, I think this came out like six months ago. I mean, y'all saw the one that the, has a black cover that I just bought like a couple weeks ago. I have this, I think, but I love this. I love these. I love these imagine F, imagine effects, FX effects. But I think they either republished it, they republished it, or it's just been. I would have noticed if it's been sitting in my barns and I mean my books a million all this time because I really look for these. You know, I really look for these. So if it, they've either repushed now, this one again in the uh, sketchbook and any of the Imagine FX books, there's some nudity. So I do kind of be careful. I do kind of be careful when I flip through these. But these are amazing. What they are sketchbooks. They're sketchbooks from multiple different people. I don't mind showing the busty ladies, but I don't want to show the nudes. So I mean, I don't care. But you know, I try to keep my shelf family friendly um so yeah but look look at the awesome detail in these i'm peeking before i open the book oh let me let me zoom in a little bit here guys i am a little i could zoom in a couple of clicks here and uh, brighten it up just a little here there we go so uh, anyway, but I love these books. The art in them are, you know, it shows their sketchbooks. And the art is just amazing in these. I love them. <clears throat> and there's just tons, tons of different artists. Their pencil sketches, their ink sketches. You know, look at all their little creatures. Uh, in that last one I showed you, that had a black cover was, um, oh, what do you call it, was in it. Jake Parker was in that one. So I'm just kind of, look at that Yoda. It's a Frankenstein. Isn't it cool, guys? I won't show much more, but just so you can kind of, Dra Dracula. I know, aren't they, Christine? They are fabulous. The last one showed uh, how to draw some figures. So there was a lot of nudity in that one, which, you know, if you've ever taken life drawing, you're used to drawing nude people, but, you know, not everybody on, you know, try to keep this, like I said, family friendly. So isn't it awesome? I love these books. I could just sit and study them. Study the line and the line width and the everything about them. I just love it. I could just just stare at one. You could just stare at one thing for a long time and learn so much. 
So anyway, um, yeah. So I might have two of these. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go through my stack of these. And the other thing is, after I um, after I read and study them, I usually Cameron loves these as well because you know he draws and sketches all the time. I, he just gave me two, ugh, how many? One, two. I did I say about fifteen of his sketchbooks of his older sketchbooks. He gave me about fifteen of. Them. He didn't have room for them, and he just kept his current five. And uh, so he loves these books as well. So some of them I've given to him. So I may have given it, you know, I don't know. All right. So then, then let's do, I'll do flow last. I got this one, y'all. I love, I, and I don't buy these very often, but um, this is, uh, what's his Childress? What's his uh, first name again? I have all his other, I have all of his books. David, David Hatcher Childress. And he does ancient America books. I've got probably... I don't know, eight books by him, maybe. I'm not sure. I should pull, I should have pulled them out. But I have a whole bunch of books by the editor of this magazine. And every now and then I'll pick one up, maybe twice a year or something. I don't buy every issue. It has to have something in it to grab me. Because I've read so much of this stuff that it's, there's, you know, I don't want to say there's not a lot of new stuff. There's always new stuff being discovered all the time. But I've read so much of this that it's hard to get my interest in a magazine. But I picked this one up. Um, and it's the, their World Explorers. And I love the little logos. I love some of the, um, I love the ads. Here's a here's advertisement for a bunch of the books that they have. And, and I've got a lot of these. Um, there's just pages and pages <clears throat> of books on lost cities and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I love mysteries. I love archaeology. I, I remember I told you I wanted to be an archaeology archaeologist when I was a kid. So I love all this stuff. <coughs> so there's lots of advertisements for the books in the back. Um, and then photographs, look, cartoons. This is uh, Professor Wexler, World Explorer, does these cartoons. And then I don't, I don't know. I just like, I like the classify. I like all of it. You know, um, I just don't buy it every, every time, every uh, issue. But, uh, you know, a lot of Peru, a lot of Central America. Um, and I have my own views and theories and what I think about all this. I won't get into it now. Although I could, I could do, I could do a whole show on this stuff. I could do a whole show on this kind of stuff because I love it. So anyway, this is the, let's see, what issue number is it? Volume 8, number 7. So y'all can kind of see what's in that one. Um, and by the way, speaking of, you know, mysteries and things, there's a new uh, Amelia Earhart uh, show on last night on Nat Geo. Bob Ballard went looking for Amelia. And he spent two weeks around this island that they suspect that she her plane sunk off the coast of. He didn't he didn't find it. So and, he, and he's already done interviews on different news uh, shows saying I didn't find it. But he you know it's it was so interesting. They they did little excerpts of her life. So they showed photos and videos and talked about what she thought about and believed and a little bit of everything about Amelia's life. So it was very interesting. So if y'all get to see. The, it's brand new, just Nat Geo just aired it last night. So if you get to watch that one, it was really interesting. So, um, yeah. Hi, Debbie, the doodler. Hi, Colleen. Oh, Colleen, I saved something to show you. I saw on one of your, and I know I don't watch you, Beth, Kat, Kat, Kathy Caber. I don't watch all those shows because they're like at right, wrong times for me uh, to watch. But I try to clip in. Hi, Janet. I try to clip in a few, you know, here and there, watch a little bit. And sometimes I scrub through the videos, Colleen. But I saw you talking about you were going to get another tattoo with the Tree of Life. Well, I came across this and I saved it in my photos. I saw it on Instagram. And I, as soon as I saw it, and I'm not saying you have to get it or anything like that. Um, I just, but I saved it to show it to you. This is on, it's on Instagram and it's earthly citizens. It's a ring. Ah, oh, it's not going to show up. 
Look at that ring, Colleen. It's like teal, turquoise, and gold. Now, it's not real gold. I think the ring's 20 bucks, so <laughs> it's not real gold, right? But I'm trying to get it maybe right about there. But look at that ring, Colleen. I just thought of you. I know. It has the tree of life on it. So oh, I got to show that to Colleen. So I saved it just to show <laughs> Just to show you, it's only 20 bucks. Anyway, uh, and while I'm here in my pictures, let me go over to my mail because I am i don't know if Scoobs is going to be here or not. Hi, Lisa. Anybody else I'm missing? Hi, Nick and Tina. Um, the Scoobs sent me and Janet some pictures. Well, where are they? Uh, uh, here, okay. Sent a couple of emails and... In the pictures, I would have brightened them up a little bit, but I didn't have time. But I'm going to show you some of Scoob's pictures here. I got to tilt it so... Wait, wait, let me just try to turn the brightness down a little. Maybe if I turn the brightness down a little. There we go. So Scoob's has been drawing. These are some of her Inktober's that she's been drawing. And they're so sweet. I love her little... She could write a little fairy tale, couldn't she, Janet? Look at the little narwhal. She could she could be writing. Um, <laughs> I would write all those. Uh, she could be writing a little fairy tale. So there's some of her little Inktober's, and they're so cute. Scoobs, if you watch this, there's oh well, she's not on social media. You need to get on at least get on Instagram, Scoobs, if you're watching this. You need to be on Instagram because next month. I don't know if any of y'all know about folk. Um, I don't forget folk tale. It's November is folk tale month. They have all the prompts for folk tales, and you write little folk tales. Oh my gosh, Scoobs could be in that folk tale November. Okay, now wait a minute. I got one more here. Let's see here. Let's get them to load. Come on, load. Let's see here. Oh, okay. I have to show them to you. Do I have to show them to you individually? What happened here? They're not coming up. No, no. Why are they not coming up, Janet? She sent them to both of us, so it kind of it kind of messed up my uh, trying to show them. Why, why are they not coming up? I'm clicking my name, and it's just showing JPEGs, but they're not clicking. It looks, it's taking, my phone is uh, assuming that it's a phone number and it's going to call. I'm trying to click on the individuals and it said, do you want me to call that? Oh, no, no. So I don't know. I can't, they're not coming up. She sent them to me and Janet. Where are they? Oh. Let's see. Let me look. Um, she just sent them to my, what is a baby? What is it? I said, nope, that's the Inktober ones came up just fine. These are not coming up. Well, guys, I'll have to show them to you another time. They're not coming up. I don't know why. I might have to. Yeah, mine loaded automatically the first time too, Janet. They loaded automatically the first time too, but now they're not. Now they're not loading automatically. Oh, you know what? Because I'm trying to look at them on my phone and I already looked at them on my computer. Let me look. No, I can't do that. I'll have to show them to y'all next time. Uh, or I can't. Sorry, guys. That's I can't do it. Maybe Janet. Janet, maybe if you want to show them on your show. Um, sunset. Sun. I don't know what that is, Debbie. Sunset Friday night. I have no idea what you're talking about, Debbie. Sunset Friday night. Uh, yeah, Janet. Janet streams at one. Maybe she can show them on her phone. The the other sets of them you'll try. Okay, I can't get them to load on my on my phone. It keeps trying to call. <laughs> All right, babe, you're gonna have to get down now. All right, I know. Okay, so then the flow book, the flow magazine. This is not the flow book of paper lovers. Um, the sunset we had Friday night. Um, I don't know if I saw it, Debbie. Maybe I saw it on Instagram. I don't know. Um, uh, Bob, you need to go find, uh, you need to go find the 12 year old site. Yeah. Uh, Bob, you're, you need to go find where the 12 year olds hang out. That's, that's your place. Um, yeah. <laughs> go find where those 12 year olds hang out. Okay. So, um, 
Thanks. Thanks, Mods. Um, so anyway, the flow, I loved this cover. So I wasn't so impressed. I mean, I liked everything in it, but I, I the cover, I just love this cover of Frida. I love that. And then it came with the how to get a grip on your time in life again. So it's another one of those little mini courses. They've been coming out with these for some months now. Uh, the flow little mini courses <laughs> that they're they're belly banded with the plastic around them. So if you go to get you a new flow, make sure that this is attached to the back. Okay, it's not inside, it's it's attached to the back with a plastic belly band around it. Um, I just sub to flow and stop playing. I am so in love with their I know I love their, but I cut them up right away usually. I don't I don't uh, I don't collect them, but there's nothing wrong with that if you collect them. Nothing wrong with collecting, but I cut them up. I cut the book of papers up, I cut the magazines up, and I don't buy every single flow magazine. Um, I usually go through it and see if there's something really in there that I'm going to want. So um, lately I've bought the last maybe three or four in a row. But uh, And I could subscribe. Um, I, I could subscribe to it, but I like, I like trying to find things. Just like the... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. As y'all are talking about Sunset, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just going to have to... Sorry, say sorry. I don't know what y'all are talking about right now. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> y'all can talk about the sunset, but I don't know what y'all are talking about. Okay, so anyway, um, first off, in the little how to get a grip on your time in life, it's like a little exercise, uh, a little exercise in just you know, it's the kind of mindfulness thing, right? The mindfulness, the calm. There's like there's probably about I don't know four or five different magazines out now, mindfulness, calmness. I don't even remember all the names of them. I've bought a few of them here and there. Uh, my thing with that is I do my own writing and my own note taking, my own listing, my own, uh, you know, book notes and all that stuff that I don't ever really fill them out. And if I do take a prompt from it, what I'll do is I might, you know, read one little prompt. Same thing for any of these other books. When there's prompts in them, I'll pick a prompt or two that really grab me. Up and I'll, I'll write that in my own journal or my own travelers or my own society of idea collectors. So I don't really write in these kind of books when they're like this, but I'll take excerpts out of it a question or a prompt or something like that and I'll use it in my own journals right just like right now the thing that I've been working in somewhat is my Jane journal this is my Jane journal where I added all three of her uh journals her girl journal and her I don't even remember the names of them I had to pull them I'd have to pull the covers I did keep the covers but I took them all apart and glued them in <laughs> Well, I washi tape them all in. So um, like, for instance, when I'm reading this book, if there's some prompt things in here that are really, uh, you know, grab my attention, then I'll write those in my Jane journal. I'm calling it that because it's got all of Jane's, uh, it's got all of Jane's, uh, what do you call it? Journals. <laughs> it's got all of Jane's journals taken apart and put in here. So. So I don't really ever write in these. Do you know what I mean? Any of those kind of calm, flow, uh, breathe. Let's see, there's calm, flow, breathe, uh, mindful. And then I think there's mindfulness. So there's all these different ones that are out now. Everybody wants everybody to calm down. <laughs> it's all about, let's buy these books on how to calm down. <laughs> Okay, so in the flow, and again, I, I'm gonna, I'll keep checking out my, uh, you know, Books a Million and Barnes and Noble to find the flow book of paper, and so I will be getting that one as soon as I find it. Yeah, flow for kids, I don't know, there's all kinds of different ones. Uh, there's breathe for teens, um, there's all kinds, I see them all the time, I don't buy them, I don't buy them all, but I flip through them, yeah, keep calm, um, <laughs> have tea and biscuits <laughs> that's actually one of the magazines i think is keep calm or calm something like that sean there's all kinds okay so anyway um i usually like these for the illustrations 
you know, I, you know, it's, it's the articles are nice. Don't get me wrong, but I, I'm just not a calm person. <laughs> I'm just not a calm person. I, I'm very energetic. I'm always on the go. I always am doing something. And even when I'm not doing something, I'm reading. I'm reading. Yeah, if I can. Yeah, Colleen. I love the illustrations, the photographs and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm not uh, very calm. Uh, let's just say. Let's just say. <laughs> but look, you know, see all this, this is very eye candy, very uh, inspirational. Uh, and I, I, you know, I read like the articles on individual, individual artists, like their studio, what, how they spend their time, what they work on. Um, <laughs> Smack and dragon. I don't know about that, but yeah. Um, you know, you just got to kind of go with who you are. Not everybody is really laid back. Hubster is laid back, you know, but he jogs and he does a lot of, he does energetic things. But he's very, he's just a calm, very calm person. You know, I'm just not that way. I never have been. <laughs> but uh, but I still like reading about it. I like reading, you know, I'm not, I'm no longer a teenager, but I still like reading, you know, like the books that I got because of uh, Faithful Mess. Those yearbooks, the Tavi yearbooks. I love those. I love reading stories about, teenage angst why not you know keep up with you know what kids are thinking these days you know i just you know i like comic books i like graphic novels i like there's a lot of things i like so then look at these look like i don't know if these are wood cuts or lino cuts what are they gotta be lino cuts uh -huh. I'm not seeing what they are yet. Hmm. Okay, researching. Observing nature. Nope, doesn't say what they are yet. Hmm. <clears throat> Further reading. I'll have to get into it. See, that looks like lino cuts. They look digital to you, Faithful? You think they might be digital? I don't know. Look. Look at it close. Well, you probably have the magazine already. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so anyway, they just have nice photographs that are sometimes they're cardstock quality. See, I'll cut, I'll use the this kind of thing is I'll use these for dividers in Society Idea Collector or one of my notebooks, or I'll use these for dividers. And, uh, yeah, but if there's articles about people and their studios and things like that, I'll read those. I'll read the articles. Now, here's what the, this is what the new book of paper lovers looks like. That right there. Now, it's this, it's about this big. Y'all seen those thick flow books are about that thick and they're about this big. This is what the cover looks like on the new one right there. Just so if you're looking for it. I don't know. I don't know, Sean. I'll have to look into it more. Um, so anyway, but look. See, I love the yellows in this. Look. Four mini posters. See, I love these. I'll cut these out and put them in, a, in my other journals. I think I have this one for a previous year. They're just so nice. Okay. And then some different places around the world. Here's some uh, advertisement for some of their other books. Know Yourself, a book of questions. Um, another, you know, cardstock. I don't need therapy. I talk to my cats. <laughs> this will definitely be going in one of my journals. <laughs> Maybe on the front page. Maybe on the front page, you know. <laughs> but a lot of I'm I'm using um I'm using my happy planner system. I mean the rings, you know, just like I'm doing my Fibs year YouTube yearbook. It's the happy planner covers 
with the big rings, but all the papers inside I've cut up my, I've punched myself. Well, not hand punch. I shouldn't, <laughs> that was kind of mis, misleading. I'm not punching them all myself. I'm punching them all myself. Um, <laughs> so I put in my own, I make my own um, journals with the, with the happy planner system, but I don't use the dates and the calendars and all that. I don't plan. I don't plan like that. I keep track of things. I write things down, but I don't do a daily kind of thing. I tried, said that before. I've tried that one year. <laughs> I couldn't wait for the year to be over. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, I like that. This will have to go in one of my um, my personal handmade planners. Um, and then different little look stages of the uh, blackberry and different flowers and things like that. Look, it's the stages of them. I don't know. It's really kind of little interesting things like that. My perfectly imperfect life, 127 exercises for self-acceptance. You know, they got little things like that. So advertisement, museum of me. Another thing I really want to do more of uh, is take more pictures of things like little groupings, like little art supply photos, you know, put little, put little uh, Bob in there. You know, I want to do more like for Instagram kind of thing, you know, do some more like Instagram type photos, you know, with little vignettes, little photography vignettes that just, you know, I love the way that those look when people do that. And uh, so, yeah, maybe I'll get, get into that more in the new year. Sun, Sea, Sand, and Sketch. So different sketchbooks. This one's Jennifer Burron. So uh, Valencia, Valinska. Um, so, yeah, so I love all, I love illustrations. And if y'all don't follow, like, uh, illustration, folk tales. Oh, let me talk about that real quick because I mentioned it earlier. If you want to do, um, if you want to do a prompt thing, I think there's only five or six prompts in November. I think. Let me go over to IG here. Um, let me look up. Uh, uh, hang on. Let me look up. Uh, folk should pop right up. Oh wait, I got to hashtag it. Hang on. Folk. Tale folk tale is it weeks? No, it's not weeks. Okay, well, here it is. Okay, folk tale week. Okay, I guess it is a week. Oh, it's November 4th through the 10th. If you follow folk tale week prompts, so it's just a week. So there's one every day for a week. I'm not going to do it, so I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention, but I love the art. So if you want to see some cool art, follow hashtag folk tale week. Okay. And the prompts for that week, November 4th through 10th, home, secret, path, smoke, darkness, key, and what's that other one? Crown. So those are the prompts for the, the week. Uh, let me go over here to Folktale Week. Hang on. Let me go back over here and show y'all some of them. Let's just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to scroll through some of them. I mean, they're just awesome little, um, ideas for when that people are starting they're gonna say i'm gonna be in it so if you want to see some awesome illustrated art go follow folk hashtag folktale week okay and they're just showing different little see isn't that awesome guys you'll get some awesome ideas yeah Okay, so there are, so far in Folktale Week, there's already 22,000 posts. So you'll get plenty of inspiration. 22.4 thousand. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Colleen. Yeah, following. You'll get so much inspiration from that, uh, that hashtag. Um, so anyway, just some little different watercolors and things in the sketchbooks. See, they're in their sketchbooks here. And then here's another... Um, cardstock divider a flow diary again i love these kind of things miss vicky b is my planner queen 
I can't do a diary. I just can't do a dated diary planner. But I love them. I love the way they look because they're books. <laughs> they're books, people. Um, yeah, you're following now too. Let's make a mess. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You'll get so much inspiration. So much inspiration on folktale. Yeah. Oh, good, uh, uh, Christine. And then there's just all little different. Some are advertisements. Some are just little articles. And uh, again, I like to read them. But am I going to, you know, slow down? And yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> um, here's a little article on the philosophers. And, you know, just little. Look at the illustration. See, I love this. I love the way this looks. This is just so cool. Oh, I got that a little flashed out. Maybe it's just because it's black paper. Maybe it's just because it's black paper. There we go. That's a little better. Um, can't stick with the planner. I know, me too. I love planner stickers. I love all planner stuff. I love planners. Uh, faithful. Matt, faithful mess. But I don't like planning and I don't like diary type things. I, I don't know if you heard my story about, um, I don't know. It was before I started streaming. It was back when I was scrapbooking. And I mean, you know, I scrapbook to the kids and the grandkids and all that up till, you know, they don't even care about it until they come over and they'll get the scrapbooks out and they'll take pictures of my scrapbook pages and, and, and Snapchat that and stuff. But anyway, they don't want the books. So anyway, um, so I did a 12 by 12 binder and I took a 12 by 12 calendar, cut it up and mounted all the calendar pages on nice 12 by 12 basic gray paper. Y'all know how long ago this was. If you've been around scrapbook paper, you know how long ago basic gray paper. They don't know. They still may make it, but yeah. So I had my 12 month calendar. I was going to write in everything I did every day for a year in those little two inch squares right? <laughs> and I've told y'all this before, the time, by the time October rolled around, I could not wait for that year to be over. <laughs> Just did not enjoy that at all. I spent more time trying to keep up with myself than I did doing things. I could keep up with myself. Seriously, could not keep up with myself. So yeah. <laughs> And then here's a little question and answer prompt thing. So anyway, uh, but I love this cover. Who did this, by the way? Let's see. Uh, I can't read it, the signature. Um, Jess. Uh, let me see. It's on the inside. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, that's talking about Frida. Where's the artist that did that cover? It's not named there. Well, I'm not looking. I'm not seeing it. Cover. It's from a mural by Campos Jesus. Campos Jesus. C A M P O S J E S S E S. So it's a mural. I guess this right here is life size then. So this is must be actual. This is like really somebody on a bicycle riding by the mural. Look how big that is then. Look at that. That is awesome. Um, probably, how would I use this cover, Donna? It's probably as a divider, as a divider in a journal. I'd probably, you know. Because it's thick. But look at that. Look. This is a mural. Hi, Devin Rex. Isn't that awesome? Well, anyway, so that's the new Book of Flow. Um, did I go through that? Yeah, I went through that. Okay, let's see. Did I go through everything? All right. So now let's go to these two new books in the art department. <laughs> We've gone through the history. We've gone through the uh, some magazines that have biographies. We've gone through the mystery, the fiction, the, <laughs> the art. We've got to go to the art. 
So you're welcome, Donna. All right, let me get a sip of my cranberry juice. So I did talk about these. I did talk about these. Hi, CB. Uh, last week a little bit, and I said we would get more into them. Um, I don't usually buy these Whimsical Girl books because I have quite a few of this type. But the reason I got this one is because they were inspired by fairy tales. So that's why I got this one. Um, hey, baby girl. Hey, baby girl. Come lay down now. You can't be knocking cameras over. and You got to lay down if you want to hang up. She sees herself in the, my iPad sitting there. She sees herself in the iPad. She will lay on my lap and look at iPad with me at night sometimes. Like it's, It looks like she's actually watching it. And she likes to rub her face on my uh, markers right there. <laughs> on my Copics. Um, okay. So anyway, this is Tamara, Tamara Laporte. But it's a whole bunch of different artists in it. And uh, so there's different fairy tales illustrated by different people in their style. Um, and... Oh, I know, baby. I see you. You're so sweet. You're so sweet, baby girl. You're so sweet. Look at that little sweet face. Get the sweetie. Yes, you are. Yeah, little Malibu. Just take a, let's take a moment here. Take a cat moment. <laughs> okay. So, so that's why I got this one because it's based on fairy tales. And I love, um, I love illustrating fairy tales. And that's what I'm really looking for. I'm not going to participate. I might do a couple sketches for myself personally, but I'm not going to participate in the week of hashtag fairy tales. Uh, folk tales. Sorry, it's folk tales uh, in the hashtag. But I love looking at them, and you know, I'm planning on working out of this book in January. Oh, oh yeah, somebody, Kathy, I think said that uh, Colleen. Colleen's going to work out of this book in January, and um, so yeah, we'll y'all follow the scrap chick, Colleen. Um, I know, Don. I do have the prettiest cats. Okay, so anyway, I did start reading the intro a little bit, but I haven't really read read it. Okay, let me let's zoom in a little here. Let's zoom in a click or two. And she talks about a little bit about her and why she wrote the book, style and development, why fairy tales, how to use this book. And she recommended, because they're step-by-step, step-out kind of projects, she recommends that you do exactly what the book says. There's very few books that tell you to follow it exactly. Okay, here we go. This is what she said. Before you begin, you may want to immediately get started bringing more of you into your art you're creating. And by all means, if you're creating any art that isn't related to this book, go right ahead. Groovy, creative. I hear you. However, if you're going to do the follow this program in this book to really dig deep and explore yourself, your voice, and your cre creativity, I invite you to number one, do the lessons pretty much exactly as presented by the teacher. Number and then a little bit. Number two, answer the questions below from each lesson. Here's the master question list. So she really wants you to do exactly what they say. And, you know, it's just, you know, whatever, you know. I guess it kind of depends on how far along in your artistic journey you are to what if you want to do that. Um, you know, if Colleen's going to do some of these uh, exercises, you know, maybe she's going to try to do that for everybody <laughs> So you see, Colleen says it's her kind of book. So this may be, you know, awesome. So it just depends on where you are, what you like. I know, me too. Uh, me too, Christine. But it might be fun. Hi, Kathy. And so, Kathy, I think, Kathy, are you going to work with Colleen and doing th going through the book? Hi, Lena. Y'all need to follow Miss Lennox. Lena, right there. Y'all need to follow her. 
I, I now I, I have still have not watched your um, scary tales, Lena. Your scary fairy, your, your scary um, art things. You know your pieces that you did based on your scary tales. But I flipped, I scrub, scrubbed through because who told me? Janet was it? Janet that told me. She goes, Lena was doing some reverse collage, and you did those pyramids, Lena. Did you post it on Instagram? Oh my gosh, Lena, you are so funny. Lena is awesome. She has the nicest accent. She has the nicest accent. And uh, is uh, Lena is your accent Denmark? Is it wouldn't be called Denmarkian? <laughs> Danish is your is your accent Danish <laughs> anyway Lena is so is so um <laughs> hi Eileen Danish okay thank you yeah and she says I can accent I can it's Danish I can accent okay well anyway it's so sweet Lena is so fun to listen to and watch but let me look up. Uh, let me look on our Instagram. Did you post? Uh, did you post it on Instagram? Uh, let me look up Lena here. Where are you? Let's see. I gotta find it. Is it Miss Lex on uh, Instagram too? Oh, it's IKEA. Oh, see, you had a joke there. <laughs> Her accent is from IKEA. <laughs> I get it now, Lena. <laughs> oh, Lena, you're so funny. Oh my gosh. Now my eyes are watering. I can't read chat. What is your <laughs> You're not, it's not posted there? Okay, you're bad at posting. Okay. Well, anyway, she y'all got a fun. <laughs> That's too funny, Lena. IKEA. Okay. <laughs> I'm still loud and my eyes are watering. I cannot see chat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, crack the whip for lean in a post. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> So they're going to be some of the girls that have been doing a reverse collage projects. There's Lena, Kathy Berg, Beth, Colleen. Who am I missing? Anyway, they've been working out of America. You know, like I have my abandoned castles, abandoned places, abandoned palaces. They have one they're working out of called America. And they're all working out of the same book. So, and they'll pick a theme, somebody, I don't know how they pick a theme, if one of the ladies picks a theme, uh, they pick a theme and they all work together uh, doing that project. <laughs> okay, so Kathy said there's 28 people working along in some way or another, but I'm talking about the ones of y'all that stream together. There's Kathy, Beth, Lena, Colleen. Did I say Kathy? Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then she talks about what kind of pencils, mediums, collage supplies, tools, markers, and pens, inks, and sprays. This is like um, uh, an Eileen list right here who has all everything. <laughs> Our enabler elf. Okay, then let's see. She talks about the story of you, some self-exploration, questions on self-exploration, and things to ask yourself. I guess you. she really wants you to do this in order. So we will be expecting you, Colleen, and those working in this book to answer all these questions for us before you get started. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. So here is like, this is lesson one, Little Red Riding Hood. Is this, uh, is this uh, Tamara on this first one? Let's see. Let's look at the beginning. She has the list of the uh, of the artist at the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the first lesson is, I guess, hers. Lesson two is Bambi. The guest teacher is Mickey Wild. Um, then there's a lesson three in between. So the lessons in between must just be Tamara, and then every other lesson is a guest teacher. It looks like something like that. So. Anyway, so thought process, why I wanted to bring this story. And see, here's the step-by-step. -step. See how she does step-outs? 
So she's doing a step-by-step -step process for you to follow. Uh, this artist wants you to meditate for each step. Well, I won't be doing that. I'll be, I'll read through it. I probably won't do the book, but you know, you just reading how other artists do things. You always pick some tip up or something. You're going to learn something by reading these books. And like I said, the reason I wanted it is I wanted to see what, what they thought about the fairy tales. It was the fairy tales that got me to buy this book. I want to see how they thought about the fairy tales. Like, why? how did they think about Little Red Riding Hood? That kind of thing. That's what I wanted to, to, to see. Um, here's some little how to make some different wings and flowers. Here's how to draw some different kind of faces. See, look, different placement of the eyes. Some different little faces there. Um, and then here's Bambi. Again, Mickey Wild, and I don't, I don't know all these people, but um, she does explain her thought process. Okay, all right. Well, see, I haven't read it yet. I just, like I said, I just got this and haven't had a chance to, you know, I've been reading other things. But if you want to learn a lot of step by steps, um, you know, I have my own way of doing animals, but I still like to read. I like to see how other people do things. Here's Alice. So again. She has different little sketches. <clears throat> okay, so I want to know, now when I draw my lemurs and my animals, do y'all get out something and draw along with me? Just saying. Do y'all do that? Do y'all get out and draw with me, Colleen? <laughs> I'm teasing y'all. I'm teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go sometimes okay so here's rapunzel and again thought process what i wanted to bring to the story all right let me just read a, a random one here as i sat there in her place in the dark of a tiny room and small room i was suddenly i was in suddenly wait I was in suddenly became vast, deep, and full of scary shadows. A dark river of the unknown flew between me and a window. More than one possibility of escape crossed my mind, none of which seemed safe and easy. Do I have enough courage for the staircase? Do I have enough strength for the ladder? But then there was that bright light of hope coming from the window and a stream of fresh air. There was hope to love and be loved out there in the freedom of a sunny world. So I guess that was her thought process on creating this piece. So, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't, Sue. No, you don't. I'm just wondering, you know. <laughs> y'all come to I mean, y'all come to my show and I do a lot of demos. I just wondered if y'all you know follow my demos. <laughs> I'm teasing you guys. I'm laughing. Okay, so inspiration, how to find it, how to use it. So then there's a little article on that. And uh, then it goes into, so I hear the Goo Girl again. I think that's Tamara's there. And then it goes into uh, Andrea Gomel. Now, I've, I've watched, it's been a while, but I know she has a YouTube channel because um, I recognize the name. But then she does step-by-steps again. Look, she shows you how to draw step-by-step. -step. And, uh, yeah. And it kind of reminds me of, like, Oh, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that do this kind of look. These whimsical girls. Um, Sue somebody. Susie. Susie Blue. And there's some different ones that have done. It's been a long time since I've really looked at the artists that do this kind of thing. But again, the reason I got this one was because of the fairy tales. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. But if you like this, y'all will love the folk tale week follow the folk tale week on instagram and you'll see thousands of cool uh fairy tale folk tale so anyway i just wanted to kind of show y'all that if y'all want more demos on this it looks like colleen's gonna do that did you say the first of the year colleen the first of the year yeah a lot of people love whimsy girls I'm not against whimsy girls. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just, that's just not what I do. You know, I mean, I've done a few for you guys, but it's mostly, I like whimsy animals <laughs> in my posters, my whimsy animal posters. 
I don't have them handy. I don't know if I could. Um, hang on, I'll show you. I do more animals than people. Let's see. Let's see if I have them handy enough to get to. Well, I've got a couple here. Let's see. Here's the other ones. I'm not sure where they all are. I think they're in another portfolio. These are just the biggest ones here. Well, here's a couple. All right. So my biggest poster is probably this. Well, no, I guess that's my second biggest. This is one of my this is one of my posters here. This is my peace law. So this is my um, my version of whimsy, if you will. Um, yeah. It's got a little flash out there because I put some color with black in it. Let me let me turn it down a little. Hang on. There we go. And uh, so this is my peace sloth. And uh, he, like, he like his little goatee. <laughs> so uh, let's see. What else? Okay, now this one we did here not too long ago. Let's see. We did this one last. Uh, it says 2018. So seems like just yesterday. But did I really go back? Does this really go back to 2018? So here's my lemurs. Uh, here's some lemurs in the box. <laughs> and uh, there's my circus collage all around it. So yeah, but the lemurs are all hand, they're all hand painted lemurs. <laughs> uh, so I really like it. And then this then collage down here. And it's just on a big poster. I don't even know how big this is. Let me just kind of make it. Here. It's 18 inch ruler. So it's about 20, maybe 22 by 20. 28, uh, it's probably about uh, 22 by 30, something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, yeah. Um, Scoobs is here. Did I see Scoobs is here? Okay, I don't know, I missed it. Hi, Judy. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, we did this one on, there's a video for this. Uh, let's see what else did I pull uh, yeah, I don't have the other animals here. These are other collage posters. They're in a, the other ones are in a, the other animals are in another portfolio. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have them. They're in, a, they're in another portfolio, so I won't dig those out right now, but yeah. Oh, hi, Suze. No, I was looking for Scoobs. I was looking for Scoobs. But uh, yeah, but hi, Suze. <laughs> okay, so um, let's put that aside for a minute, and then here we'll do this. Now I got to lighten it back up again because of the uh, change in colors. Change in color here. Let's brighten this baby back up. There we go. Um, okay, so this might be a little too bright. Yeah, there we go. So this book is Lisa Congdon, C-O-N-G-D-O-N. And she, um, I see her classes advertised in magazines and on, I don't know if I see them on Facebook. Anyway, I see her, she has classes out. I never really looked into them, but um, I see that she has them because she, you know, goes by in the, you know, advertisement feed. And uh, here comes uh, Oliver. Come on, baby. You're going to have to lay down. Lay down. Let's just lay down. Oh, do you see that tiger? Hmm? See that tiger? So we got the other one here, too. There they are. They're both. She's asleep right there. He's going to be. He wants to. You know, he can't go over there, but he always wants to go by the cords. Can't go by the cords, so. Uh, so anyway, let's see, now I've got it crooked again. <laughs> yeah, ads are always on Instagram. Yeah, it's Instagram. Maybe that maybe I see it at both places. So anyway, uh, she has a very distinctive style. Look, this is this kind of, you know, 
you can kind of get her style by looking at this. And again, I've only read like, oh, maybe up to page 17. This is where I am, page 17. And she talks about, you know, just a finding your style. That's what the book's about. Has little stories on other artists. Let's go back. Let's go back. So the chapters are, what is an artistic voice? Chapter two, why does having a voice matter? Chapter three, the path. Chapter four, navigating influence. Chapter five, the importance of showing up, practicing, and setting routines. Chapter six, begin anyhow, moving through fear. Chapter seven, strategies for developing your own voice. So those are the, the chapters, along with cattails. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, is this a book preview? Well, kind of. I just kind of do a, it's not really, I don't really review them. I just kind of show a little bit here and there, you know, the different books that I buy. Um, conformity is for the birds. And uh, so they got a little, she got a little article here on that, finding your own voice. She talks a little bit about how she grew up. She was very, um, wanted to do everything by the book, very uh, by the book kind of person in school and everything till she moved, went to college. Uh, what's an artistic voice? Speaking your truth, style. And then she talks a little bit about shape, layering, color, texture, composition, rhythm, and movement pattern and repeating imagery, line, you know, some of the art, art rules, um, skill, 10 steps to building skill. There's my bookmark. This is where I left off. All right, baby, you can't have that feather. No, no, baby. You, can, you can't have my feather. No. Oh. You'll probably be right back up here. Um, and then she talks about Picasso, Georgia O'Keeffe, Monet, different Matisse. She talks a little bit about some artists, I guess, that influenced her. Um, subject matter. Uh, then here's a little question and answer. So she asked these this couple here uh, some questions like, what is an art, artist's voice? And Selena, so I guess this is a husband and wife thing here. Again, I haven't read about them. Um, Selena says, everyone has a story. Your voice includes things you've experienced and that are unique to you, your interests, family, and culture. Your voice is also your medium. For example, I love collage and it includes all of the objects, paper, patterns that I'm drawn to, and the way I put them together and make something new. Then Sean answers, an artist's voice is how you see and interpret the world. It's your own unique spin on a given subject, a way of seeing and describing the world filtered through your own lens. Then Lisa asks the question, Lisa's the author of the book, what are some things you remember about finding your voice? Selena, I remember I had to block out the negativity and noise. I began asking myself, what am I drawn to? How do I want my work to look? What is exciting to me? There is this way that we compare ourselves to other artists. We say, oh, I'm not there yet. And why am I doing this anyway? Because I'm going to fail. Being an artist can feel so competitive and that is the noise that often clouds our ability to be creative. I had to work hard to not let those thoughts get the best of me. I began listening to what I really like to do. I really like to paint and collect papers and I really like putting them together. That excites me. I realize that the magic happens in my own private space, not when I'm focused on what others other what other artists are doing. And then Sean's answer to that question I recall that I realized at some point that I was not good at making a sketch in the traditional way as we are taught to make sketches. But then I gave myself permission to use different tools. I could use a photocopier to enlarge and reduce things and manipulate images. And then I discovered collage, but I didn't want it to look like everyone else's collage. So I started painting my own papers. The more I realized that I could make my own rules and that I had something unique to offer, the more my work began to appeal to a greater audience. I was thinking specifically about developing my own style. I was just finding ways to keep my work interesting and enjoyable. 
your voice develops as a byproduct of doing the stuff you enjoy over and over again and making new discoveries. Once I dug into what I was obsessed with making, my voice as an artist began to take a life of its own. So see, Lisa's asking some artists their view on uh, your finding your voice. Then her next question was, <clears throat> you both work by yourselves and also together. What's it like to collaborate with two different voices? And then they answer that. Then she asks another question. You've begun saying that together you found a third voice because they're, you know, a collaborative couple. Uh, then Lisa says, what, and then they have their answers. Lisa, what, what's your advice for illustrators who are trying to develop a voice? Sean, remember that you are being hired to be yourself. Whatever your perspective is, whatever your experience is, that's why people hire you. The whole point of illustration is to help people see things differently. You can only do that if you are coming from your own experience. Selena, take a class or change your environment. Expose yourself to new things. Those are all great ways to get new ideas for how to approach your work. Sean, your voice becomes stronger as you develop your vocabulary. To do that, you want to get out in the world, watch movies, listen to music, podcast, read books, see art, look for what speaks to you. Surround yourself with voices that challenge you or that you don't understand, not just other artists who resonate for you or who you want to emulate. So then she goes on to the medium and consistency. And then she asked another person, this one's Andrea Pippins on speaking your truth, authenticity, and connecting. And then Lisa does another little Q&A with that person. See, so it's a little bit of a little bit of finding your voice, but she's interviewing other artists and getting their thoughts and perspective. Bye, Becky. Um, let's see. Okay, I think that's uh, all that I saw addressed to me. Why does having a voice matter? Um, some example of things that could be part of your story. Of course, you know, I'm big on lists. Y'all know I'm big on lists, Society of Idea Collector. Make those lists. And then she interviews Finn Lee. And again, what is a voice? Uh, Finn says, your artistic voice is not so much style as it is heart. You're the only one that has your voice. No one can take that away from you because no one else is you. And then she does a little interview with her. And they're like two, three pages of question and answers when she's interviewing them. Uh, your voice is an essential element uh, for, uh, for professional sustainability. sustainability. Um, and then I'm guessing that the, this is all Lisa's art the illustrations in the book, trust the cycle, the spark. And then they interview another artist here for a couple of pages, the ongoing desire to create risk taking and experimentation. Uh, Andy J Miller on influences, experiences and experiments interview with him. Create a flow. And again, you see, look, it's eye candy. Hi, Sharon M. Sue. Who else am I missing? Oh, I did not know that Faithful Mess. Faithful Mess said Andrea Pippins is also a color book artist or coloring book artist, I should say. She designs color books. Uh, strategies for navigating influence. Here's another little interview with Daniela Chrisa. Chrisa? 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 Uh, the importance of showing up, practicing, and setting routines. Y'all know I'm all about the practice. And on showing up, you know, one of my mottos is, you know, 99% is in your butt. You got to sit down and do it. Um, just checked on the sketchbook magazine. Wow, that's a, yeah, the, those magazines are like buying books, Sean. Yeah, those magazines are not the sketchbook, the um, uh, FX books. Yeah. Imagine FX books. Yeah. The sketchbooks, their books, none of them. They're not cheap. Yeah. You're buying a book. You know, if, if you had a hardcover on it, 
if you had a hard cover on that magazine, you'd think, oh, that's worth it. You know, just because it's paperback, you'd think, well, I'm paying a lot for this magazine. But they're really books. They're really just soft cover books. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, Pamela, Sue. I know people are coming in. Karen. I said hi to Karen. Hi, everybody. Joycey. Hi, Joycey. Um, practice makes perfect. Makes perfect is lined out. Leads you to your voice. Oh, let me go back over here on showing up. <clears throat> Uh, com this is on a conference. Uh, she had to, I guess, get courage to go to a conference. Showing up includes putting in the work. Putting in the work can feel formidable, especially if you are starting out and have a job and family and other commitments. Even when we have time scheduled in our day to make art, the fear of not knowing exactly where to begin or failing or, exper or experiencing boredom often keeps us from starting. We make excuses for why it's not worth it to sit and work when we only have 20 minutes. So we choose instead to watch TV, scroll through social media on our phone. Uh, showing up includes setting a schedule for making work, no matter how limited. And when doing the work consistently and in a scheduled time, your voice cannot develop in a vacuum. It's not the result of magical thinking or observation. Your voice develops as a result of showing up and making stuff. Not once or twice, but over and over and over again. I couldn't, I mean, that needs like, it needs like a pencil. Ex What's my pencil? This needs, this needs a. This needs an annotation. <laughs> this, that needed an annotation. Okay. Mm. Practice makes perfect. Slice, you know, uh, lining out makes perfect. Once upon a time, I would wake up in the morning and walk bleary eyed to my computer to check to see if I'd gotten an email from my illustration agency about any new work assignments. I was just starting out in my career, and while I was lucky enough to sign with an agent just one year in, paid work came to me slowly at that time. She's been, I mean, I think she's, I think she's like in her 50s now. For some reason, I kind of got that, uh, you know, time-wise. She talked about when she was in her 20s and she's been at it for 30 years or something. Somehow I figured that she's like in her 50s. Um, so she's been at this a long time. Uh, even though this was a bummer and required living on a shoestring, I began to understand that if I was going to get to the place where clients were knocking at my door to work with me, I would, I had to make more work. And I had to make increasingly better and more interesting work. In other words, the only way I was going to develop my voice as an artist was through practice. Showing up and making art every day is great, but practicing is next level. Practice is about honing in on something specific. Ideally, the kind of work you'd like to get better at making and then practicing that thing over and over. So like, you know, watercolor, like Jean, I'll give, use Jean as an example. I'm not sure she's still here. And right now she's not watercoloring. She's knitting. But there was a time a few years ago, Jean was working in art journals and doing some acrylic painting and doing a lot of cool art journaling and doing um, acrylic painting um, illustrations based on song lyrics or on songs and then she moved into watercolors and Jean was you know getting new okay no 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 baby let's not not let let's get down you're knocking over all my stuff on the floor no 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 um <clears throat> and uh then she started getting into you know more advanced techniques and trying new watercolors, new supplies, new brushes. And she put in the practice and look, she goes, I'm here. I'm knitting. <laughs> we keep trying to get her back into her watercolor. But what my point is, is she put in a lot of um, effort and practice to learn a skill. Right. And here's the thing about learning a skill. I, I've said this before. When you learn a skill, whether it's collaging, watercolor, acrylic, even coloring and shading, when you put in the, the work to learn a skill, 
Then when you don't feel inspired, you can fall back on your skills. You can, you know, you may not feel like, and again, let me qualify. I'm not talking about if you got the flu, you got a broken arm, you sprain your finger. I'm not talking about all that. <laughs> I have to qualify because people actually email me. And so, well, I can't do that. I broke my arm. Well, I didn't, I didn't mean you. Okay. I didn't mean you. <laughs> But anyway, um, <laughs> so when you when you put in the this when you learn the skill, then if you don't feel inspired or don't have a you know so called inspiration, you can sit down. You can pick up certain papers, your collage material. You can pick up your abandoned book. You can pick up a, a blank. Then if you do a, if you do you know a hundred and or two hundred pages into your abandoned books, you are not going to have any problem picking up a blank sheet of paper and making a collage from scratch. You will not have any problem doing that. If you've done, you know, if you got 12 or 15 abandoned books that you're practicing your collage in, right? <laughs> you're not going to have any problem. Same thing if you've drawn, you know, a few thousand animals, you're not going to have any problem picking it up and making a poster with animals. You see what I'm saying? How do you know what you are going to hone in on? It has to be something, you know, I, I mean, we do a lot of different things here. My job, if you will, here is I feel is to inspire people to try something. So we try a lot of things here. We'll do watercolor. We'll do color books because it teaches shading, color theory, uh, blending, you know, uh, color matching, color things, you know, color theory, a lot of things like that. So we'll do color books, we'll do collage, we'll do a little watercolor, uh, we'll do a little marker, we'll do a little everything because my thing for me is I want to inspire you to start. Okay, I don't feel like I'm a teacher. I'm not going to sit here and go step by step with every Copic marker and how to blend, get out books on how to do Copics and blend. That's not why, that's not what I do. You know, this is the kind of stuff I like to share with you guys. Uh, you know, all the books and, to, and all the techniques that I have learned over 50 years, 50 years of practice. <coughs> Sip of juice. But once you land on something you like, thank you, uh, Kate, the skate. That's what I want to do. Well, you're a teacher, Kate, so you know what it's like. You want to inspire. But I'm not a methodical step-by-step. -step. I'm not going to, you know, this is this step-by-step -step kind of thing is not what you're going to get here. We might do one occasionally. I'm not saying we never do anything like that. Uh, but it's, you know, I've, I've gone through step by step on how to do my, how I do my collages with the materials and the, I want to kind of teach you the skill of it. But then like you learn your own voice as to what you do with that skill. Once you learn the medium, the supplies, the techniques, once you learn all that stuff, then you go and you develop what you want to make. Do you want to do people or animals or landscapes or buildings? You know, what kind of, uh, you know, form will your voice take is up to you. Uh, well, thank you, Devin. I do. I, I really feel I'm, encouragement and inspiration is what I like to be here for you guys. Uh, so that just takes many forms, you know, that I, I have uh, hundreds of ways, you know, the Society of Idea Collectors, the notebooks, the travelers, the composition books, the art journals, the painting, the art cards. I'm looking around my room, you know, <laughs> trying to think of all the different ways we do inspiration and encouragement to start. Um yeah, and I, I like I like to be a spark for you, and then then you guys got to go and do whatever it is you want to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, what do you call it? Uh, Sean uh, calls me uh, and I call her. She's Mama Fruit Bat. She calls me Yoda. <laughs> But I, that's what I like to do, inspire you. It's, I'm not about a specific technique, although you see me do a lot of collage, a lot of coloring, you know, a lot of specific things, but that's not my passion. My passion is helping you guys start. That's why I love coming to the show every day for nine years. Well, not every day, two to three times a week for nine years. Rarely missed a a time that I'm here during that, those nine years during those times. 
because I want y'all to be, I want you to be you. <laughs> I want you to be good at something, but it takes practice. It takes time. You know, it takes hours and hundreds and hundreds of tries. And, you know, it's if you don't love it, you're not going to stick with it. And that goes for in the arts. If you don't like drawing and painting and collaging and doing art, you let's just say you love math and science and computer programming, then go, go do that. Don't try to force yourself to do something you're not passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about it, you won't stick with it. You will not stick with it if you don't like it. And then bringing it down into an individual, uh, uh, indiv I don't want to say project, but individual medium. Uh, if you don't like collage, you're not going to stick with it. If you don't like acrylic paint, you're not going to stick with it. You're, you just won't do it. You can, you can do it for a while. And there's times where you might want to do something for a while. I did calligraphy in the 80s for tons of calligraphy. But then when everybody got a desktop and used their fonts on their computer, nobody was, you know, doing, you know, hiring me to do calligraphy. So I moved on, you know. There was four or five years where I was heavily involved in scrapbooking when the kids were younger. I wanted to document it. Now I have probably 30 12 by 12 three-inch binders of scrapbooking. I spent all those years learning that. And now it's like, yeah, you know, they don't even really want the books. But I had fun doing it. I learned a lot of things about composition, photography, printing my own photography. Print, you know, I took all my own pictures. I printed my own pictures. I learned about printers and ink. And so you learn things. But am I going to go back to scrapbooking the kids that don't even want the books? No. Will I do an occasional scrapbook page? Maybe. You see? So... I guess my thing, I love color pencil, so that's why I like especially showing uh, coloring because I can show you a lot of techniques and tips and tricks with color pencils in color booking. So a lot of people go, well, color booking's not an art. Why are you doing it? You know, you hear it. Well, let me tell you some of the things, and I've said it before. In color booking, you're going to learn shading, blending, color matching, color composition. You're going to, and for me, it's also about supporting those color book artists like Laura and Christine. They make those color books. I love to encourage them. I'll color their pictures. Look, I have, I was thought about doing one of Laura's pages today. I got her book sitting here on the, on the table waiting to do some you know, do some uh, Laura page pages. So, um, you know, I love to encourage. It doesn't bother me. It, it's, I don't, and I don't say I never feel a little spark of, oh, I wish I could do that, but very rarely. I just don't, I don't feel that. I feel like, oh my gosh, this person I can learn from. I can get inspired from. I can grow from. There's so much I can learn from. Plus, let's promote them. Let's help them. Let's develop what they're doing. I love doing that. See, I love doing that kind of stuff. And that's part of it. Now, at the same time, sometimes, and I've talked to Janet about this, sometimes I get to, um, I have to watch myself on this. This is where I have to watch myself. I'll, I'll talk, I'll tell on myself. I don't get jealous of other artists, but I get um, a little, I don't want to say jealous, but protective. I get a little protective of my time. And sometimes I can, I can get mad about it. Uh, you know, if I get somebody says, and I don't, I'm not calling out any names. If I get somebody that says, I watch all your videos. How come you don't watch mine? And I get 50 videos every single day in my uh, in my uh, YouTube feed telling me, you know, there's uploaded 50 videos every day, every day. And then I'll get message after message after message in my messenger. Well, you know, what? Are you too important now because you have 25,000 YouTube subscribers? Are you too important now that you can't answer my message? Well, yours and a hundred other people, you see. So I get, I can get a little upset <laughs> when people are demanding of my time or they come in my show and say, well, why aren't you promoting my book? 
why aren't you promoting? Look, go look at my Instagram. I do my best, guys, to show as many other people's art. Y'all know I'm big on promoting people, but I can't do just that. I can't do just promotion. I can't do just answering messages and I can't watch everybody's videos. I mean, I'm just being honest. So that's my area that I have to really like, you know, Dee Dee now, let's not get upset. They don't understand <laughs> that you have all this time suck, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've got, and Julie Topaz says it right there. She goes, this group has gone from 20 people nine years ago to over 20,000. And just because those 20,000 people aren't here in our chat, we might have between 100 to 200 here. You know, we might have that many here at a day. But I still, guys, there's, you know, I try to keep up with everybody's Instagram and their messages and their emails. And I do my best to share as much. I do as much to share as much as I possibly can and still have time to do art that I want to do, right? If there's a day where I want to collage a poster here, then I don't want to show anybody stuff. I don't want to promote somebody. I don't want to be pulling up Instagram on my phone every five minutes. I want to do that poster, you know. So there's just, you know, there's times. There's times. <laughs> it just kind of gets to me. But I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I love all you guys. I love promoting people. But I'm only one person. I'm only one person. Okay, so let's just let that go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> okay, so now, practice makes perfect, scratched out, leads you to your voice. I'm going to read just a couple more little excerpts from the book. Because this is a very interesting book. I would recommend it because if you're trying to, you know, just think about where do I go with my art as, you know, do I want to develop it? Do I want it to be... You know, do I want to do it professionally? And again, you know, I stopped doing um, portrait. Com well, I just shouldn't say stop. I do a very limited, minimal amount of portraits. I try to do one here and there on the show for free that of some a pet or, you know, like a faithful mess. Her photograph really just really touched me and I wanted to draw her. So I drew her. And so I'll do a few things like that for free on my show. But that doesn't mean that everybody just email, well, you drew faithful. Why can't you draw my animal? Why can't you draw my pet? My pet died. Can't you draw my pet? Not for free. <laughs> you know, I just can't do it all for free. So I really cut way back on my portrait commissions. I still have commissions that I do from, uh, I have regular customers that aren't online. They're not online. Some of them don't mind if I show their kids, their grandkids while I'm, they don't care if I do it online or they don't care if I do it on my show, but some do mind. If they have a grandmother that passed away or something like that, they don't want those people. They don't want them online. So I don't show them, right? So I don't show them on online. So I do, I cut way back on my portrait commissions so I could do streaming. You know, so, yeah, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm griping. <laughs> I was going to use another word, but I just kind of like, you know, I think sometimes people might need to know uh, the same thing when we did the happy mail, I was doing, uh, I was sending out a hundred cards. Well, I don't even know in a couple months. I was sending out hundreds of cards a year, birthday cards. And people would send me happy mail. They'd send me their cards to share. And now don't anybody take this like I'm talking to you here. I'm talking this as years ago. I had to stop. I had to stop doing happy mail um, card, you know, because I was giving everybody a birthday card. Well, obviously with 20,000 people, I can't send everybody a birthday card <laughs> now. So I had to stop that. So there's certain things I have to like reel in. Because it just gets overwhelming. It's so overwhelming at times, guys. And Hubster sees it. He'll he'll say, why is your phone going ding, 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 ding? And people are messaging me. They want to show me things, send me, you know, a video, send me a link, show me their art. And again, guys, don't, I don't want to make it sound like don't ever do that. You know, when I say don't email me, I'm meaning the mean ones. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm meaning the mean ones. Don't email me mean ones. You know, but I try my best. I do try my best to encourage people because that's important to me. I want to encourage people. I want them to be inspired to do stuff. And if me telling them, this is, you know, you can improve here. This needs to be done. But I only can do so much. I only can do so much of that, you know. So, yeah. Exactly, Colleen. So, anyway, um, when Hubster starts asking me what's going on, why, why are you, you know, sighing on the phone? <laughs> you know, then it's time to reel it in. Okay, so let's get back to this. And so, and then, and guys, again, don't, don't anybody take any of that personal. Like, well, she doesn't want my email. She doesn't want my app email. Eh, you know, don't be like that. Don't be like that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kate. I try to make my streams are my my thing for you guys. Right. OK. Once upon a time, I would wake up in the morning and walk bleary eyed to my computer. Did I already read that. How far did I read down? She just started out on her career showing up and making art every day is great. But practicing is the next level. Practice is about honing in on something specific. Ideally, the kind of work you'd like to get better at making and then practicing that thing over and over. In some cases, that means, depending on your medium, practicing drawing, painting, photography, or otherwise creating something in particular. People, animals, specific forms, landscapes, imaginary characters. In some cases, it's practicing the stuff you hope someday someone hires you to do in the future. One of my first tips, my former agent, Lil, Lil, Lila Rogers, gave me was that I should give myself assignments when I didn't have paid work. I would use that time to make that kind of work I wanted to get hired to do by clients. That notion, make the work you want to get as an illustrator, became a mantra and guided my career. As a result, I experimented with practicing different types of illustration, including repeat pattern design, illustration for children's market, drawing portraits of people. Instead of making just one or two of something, I made bodies of work. That, uh, that accumulation of months of daily practice. When you have aspirations to be a professional artist, you want to make art for pure enjoyment. The habit of going deep with something, though, uh, through practice. <coughs> Hang on, sip of juice. Where'd I leave off? Professional, you want to make sure the habit of going deep with something through practice is a surefire strategy for speeding up the process of developing your artistic voice. <clears throat> so, for instance, like Colleen like, seems to really like to do collage. I don't know how many really love it, you know, and maybe she doesn't really love it. I don't know. She does quite a bit of it. But let's just say you really like collage. You like, you know, I love doing reverse collage. My The technique I like to do in my books to, you know, practice that's my practice, my inspiration. I used to take my collages and turn them into paintings. I don't have time for that anymore. But I still love the collaging process. And I love my abandoned books. So I like doing my collage practice in my abandoned books to, uh, you know, to do more stuff like, like this, like my posters, right? So I combine my, I combine my own drawings and collage. And because I've done hundreds of collages, you know, I, I, what did we whip, did we whip that poster out in about three, four hours? Let me put this back. You know, I doubt that Colleen would admit she probably could not whip that poster out in four hours. Because she has to do lots of collages. But, you know, those of y'all that are doing the, like, that, somebody said there's 20-something of them do, y'all doing a collage practice in that America book. And, again, if you like to do the kind of collage that we are all practicing and doing, but pick a, pick a reverse collage book that you're going to like. Don't pick abandoned if you get creeped out by crumbling buildings. Pick a, you know, do a secret garden, do a vacation, do a city, do a country, 
do something you like because you won't stick with it. You won't stick with it. Thank you, little Cheryl. And uh, yeah, so anytime I'm doing these projects for you guys, you know, every time you color book, you do a color book page, you're learning something. You're, try, you're trying new techniques. You're to try new products. You're going to throw some, maybe throw some um, uh, twinkling H2O or, or, well, I don't know where that one came from, a stickles. You know, you might throw some uh, glitter. You might learn, try some new pencils. So we do all that here. And I, because uh, I really encourage people, if you don't think you can do anything artsy, mom, mom, you know, although she's doodled here and there, when she started coloring, she was, she surprised herself at how well she could blend colors, match colors. You know, there's just something about the coloring process. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, that's not art. You are learning so much from a color book, so much. If you're doing faces, you're learning shading, you're learning blending, you're learning face tones and colors. I do it with color pencil, watercolor, neocolor, pan pastels. Yes, I see you, baby. Um, you know, so... Uh, yeah, mist. Yeah, I saw you do some, was it some mist or some smoke or something on one of them, Colleen, that was really good. So um, anyway, yeah. So I can, okay, all right, so let me, let me, let me calm down here. <laughs> Got on my soapbox, guys. Got on my soapbox. So anyway, uh, pr uh, big on practicing. Um, let's see. What else does she say? No, you can't. I see you eyeballing. On. No, you're not going over there by those cords. Um, let's see. Let's keep going here. Uh, the importance of routine. Make a schedule and stick to it. Uh, of course, now, you know, when I was raising my kids, I've always drawn, I've always had an art space. I think I've told y'all some of the stories about when I don't, I've never been so poor that I'm on the verge of homelessness. I don't want to sound like I've been that poor, right? But, you know, when you're, everything's going for the kids' clothes and foods and school and stuff like that, and you don't have a lot of extra, you know, married to, um, you know, so a man in the military traveling every couple of years. Uh, and I grew up in the military, so we I've moved over 30 times in my life. Um, this is the longest I've ever lived in one place in my life is in this house. Uh, <clears throat> so, but I've always had an art space. Even at one point, I had a, a, a drawing board. You know, those boards that are like, uh, not, my, not mylar, what are they called? Uh, you know, those chipboard boards, the, those kind of heavy boards. They're, they're kind of thin. What are those called? There's a kind of not, I keep wanting to say mylar, but it's not mylar. What are those? Not plywood. No, it's not plywood. Uh, but you're all, you're getting there. <laughs> Something like that. Those thin, um, thin wood boards. Anyway, I had one of those that would, I would stick under a windowsill and I would sit underneath of it and in my windowsill. And that was my art table. That was my art table for some years. And, um, and uh, no, not a lap desk. It's the kind of wood I'm thinking of. Masonite. Masonite, Janet. Thank you. Masonite board. A masonite uh, piece of wood that I'd use as a desk. I'd sit on the floor, stick the masonite under the windowsill to prop it up. And that would be my desk. And then, you know, as when we moved to Alaska, and there was never really art stores. There was never art, you know, there was no blicks or you know, art stores. And of course it was way before online. And so we didn't have art stores until we moved to Alaska. And I always worked, you know, we all, always worked when the kids were growing up at um, different jobs. I mean, I've had probably as many jobs as I've had moves, but um, so I was working, I think I was working at Alaska Credit Union or was it the Yukon Office Supply? One of those, those are the two jobs I had the three years that we lived in Alaska. So anyway, uh, me and my friend, there's a friend, Cindy, and she and I worked together. Uh, you know, we were young. You know, this was like we were in our, I guess what, she was probably in her late 20s. I was probably, no, we we're, I guess we'd both be in our 20s. I was probably in my late 20s, maybe. Let's see. Um, probably somewhere like that. Anyway, so when we were in Alaska and there was a, a 
there was, she said, she was an artist too. And she said, Dee, there's an art store in downtown Anchorage. And I went, an art store? I'd never, I don't think I'd ever been to an art store. I'd never been to an art store in my life until I was in my late 20s in Alaska. So we both went that, down there after work. And then after that, every Friday when we got paid, even in 20 feet of snow on the sides of the road, you didn't drive. Yeah, they kept the roads clear. But you could see it 20 feet piled up on either side of you. We would drive down to that. I think it was called Blaine's. Blaine's Art Supply in downtown Anchorage. And every Friday, we'd take a little bit of our paycheck and go buy some art supply. That was the first time I ever had art supplies, real art supplies, other than just, you know, pencils and, you know, something you could get at. I don't know even. I don't even remember where I'd get any su supplies. But um, always drawing, you know, and I always had color pencils. I don't even remember where I got color pencils from. I always had pencils, color pencils, and some sketch pads of some sort. But uh, and there were always Prismacolor, but the, back then they were called uh, oh, they weren't called Prisma before they're Prisma. They've gone through three or four name changes, but anyway, so I've always had color pencils. And then after I started really getting into doing more Alaska animals, Alaska scenery, uh, doing uh, you know, things from um, oh, you got a, you have a photo of Blaine's art supply, is it still around, Pacola? Oh my gosh, I'll have to go look that up. Is it still there? Barrel. Yeah, barrel. Um, and I think before barrel, it was even called something. Well, maybe it was barrel and then Stanford. Then it was Stanford and then Prisma. I think that was the, anyway. So anyway, after that, then I started really collecting up art supplies. And y'all see my room since. But uh, so we have been in this room and this, I mean, in this house. And I've had this studio now for 18 I think 18 years. I've been in this studio 18 years. So, but I always had an art corner, an art space. Even then later on when we moved from Alaska, then Hubster bought me a drafting table that I set up in the corner of the bedroom. So after that, the my little drafting table in the corner of a bedroom was my studio. I've always had an art space, a little art space well i think in alaska there was a little nook i had a little nook in alaska so anyway what i'm saying is is even if you work full time raising kids working full time just squeeze just keep at it don't don't say well i don't have you know Dee stays at home at that art desk all day long she has all day to do stuff well it didn't start that way right? It didn't start that way. And so when people go, well, you're lucky, you get to sit at your desk. Well, it didn't, you know, it hasn't always been that way, right? <laughs> now the kids are gone and grown. Then I had the grandkids and then I got to teach them art, you know? So it's, <laughs> you know, it's been a long time, you know, of, you know, just doing it when I could. Doing it. You remember that place, um, Joycey, when you were there? So anyway, that was my first uh, actual art store, you know, uh, was was uh, Blaine's in Alaska. And again, Pacola posted a link, so I'm not sure if they're still there. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, fear in the creative process, seeking the comfort of the perfect moment. Let's read a minute of that. As creative people, we have lots of ideas. Write them down. Our minds are swarming with them, but we also know that getting from our ideas to a final piece of art is a messy process, and that knowledge can make us feel overwhelmed, sometimes downright terrified. And so sometimes, and so we sometimes wait for just the right moment to take action on our ideas, starting a new painting or a new daily project, a new illustration assignment, or a class to learn a more advanced skill. We fear if we start something before we're ready, we may look like an imposter or someone else will be doing the thing better and we than we can and will be reminded that we're not good enough. In the creative process and really in life, 
We don't want to risk failing. We want to be comfortable. We want exactly the right skills, the right materials, the right supplies, the right knowledge, the perfect space in our busy schedule before we even begin something to minimize the chances that something crappy will happen. <laughs> um, all right, Mark. Hi, hi, Mark, by the way. Begin anyhow. The problem is that in the end, there's no perfect moment to begin. The creative process is usually messy, no matter how hard we try to make it clean and smooth. And sometimes getting set up, she has it in quotes. So I'm not just doing air quotes. I'm showing where she has quotes. Getting set up becomes just an excuse not to begin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking getting prepared. Having some good tools, some basic skills, a routine, and a quiet space to work are awesome and super helpful, but they do not prevent failures, challenges, and unexpected twists and turns. The stuff we take pains to avoid is just part of the experience of making art. The shift we need to make is to understand that those adverse experiences also help us learn and deepen our knowledge and strengthen our grit. Risk and failure are essential components and of meaningful creative achievement and really of any creative work, right? Kaufman and Greg, Gregor, Gregory. Once we dive into the abyss a few times, we learn that we what we had feared is not actually that horrible after all. And I say this all the time, guys. I'll try new things here on stream, and a lot of streamers do. They'll, they'll, they'll just open, you know, we'll, we'll pull out a piece of paper and go, let's make a poster. And I just go for it. And if it, if it doesn't work, then I'll say, well, okay, it didn't work. We'll just tear it up and start over. Although we rarely have to tear it up and start over. We usually make something out of it, but you can paint over it. And it's just paper and paint. That's what I say. You don't, you know, we do that here. If it doesn't turn out, I get, I just don't, I don't want to say I don't care because I want it to turn out, but I'm not embarrassed if it doesn't it's like if it doesn't turn out well okay who cares if it doesn't turn out we'll just start over we'll paint over it we'll make something else out of it so if i can do that on a stream with the you know 100 to 200 people here and thousands of people watching then you can do it at home by yourself or nobody can see you doing it right so don't, don't let that stop you. Don't let the fear that it's not going to turn out stop you from starting. Okay. All right. So, so me and Lisa are like this. <laughs> well, I'm loving what she's saying. This is the first time I've read some of this. Embrace the suck. <laughs> so if it really is bad, you'll embrace this. That's funny. Um. <laughs> uh, and then here's another girl and her name's Libby Black on mistakes engaging in inquiry and magic um, Lisa asked her when you think about an artist's voice what comes to your mind Libby anybody can learn to draw it's what you do beyond the technical skin, skill of drawing that makes you an artist your voice is what you can do with those skills and tools in your toolbox your voice is your ability to think critically to question things in order to make your voice grow you have to keep feeding and taming it at the same time um i'm just kind of skipping ahead on the questions here So hopefully, I'm sure all these artists here have links. We can look, you know, you can look them up. When bad things do happen, when something doesn't work. Um, strategies for developing your own voice. Make art every day, even for a few minutes. When it gets hard, don't stop, keep going. Embrace the monotony. Uh, and then she asks another person here interviews and there's a whole bunch of interviews that I love these uh, create challenges for yourself and stick to them no matter who is paying attention uh, Martha Rich on staying weird setting challenges and the power of tangents so I'm, I'm going to read all this I, I love and if y'all don't know what Lisa looks like that's her right there I see her all the time online so yeah, no, Sharon. So anyway, that's Find Your Artistic Voice. So far from just what I've read of it, I can recommend this. 
Uh, I really think that a lot of what she says is just really good advice. Plus, it's little eye candy here and there and all these interviews. I know I'm going to probably look up all these artists and think, oh, my God. So um, don't forget to keep um, don't forget to keep a uh, Society of Idea Collector idea book, whether it's a notebook, a comp book, a TN, whatever kind. you got to keep a place to write your ideas down. The thing about, you know, and, we're, and I've said it and I'll just because it's on the topic when you write your ideas down you're getting them out of your head you you can then move on to other ideas better ideas or developing the ideas that you write down once they're on a piece of paper it's just i can't explain it you have to just get in the habit of doing it to understand how beneficial it is to write your ideas down if you see a beautiful sunset and all you have is a post-it note <laughs> A pencil write down describe it write down the colors you see how far up off the horizon or do a little sketch and write up how far up off the horizon the colors you know keep notes and then you can even if it's just on a post-it note later you can take these notes and either stick them take the note and stick it in your book or or develop it further write more about it uh, write more ideas about it, but you got to write stuff down. And I know I say that I repeat that all the time. I can't stress it enough. You have to write things down. You just have to, or you, cause I'm telling you, you will have the best idea one time and it'll flitter away. And you'll go, Oh, I wish I would have written that down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So Julie says setting goals works on november 1st 2016 i decided to post art every day for my birthday month and now i'm only 10 days from posting daily for three years julia's posted something or done something she posts a lot of it. i don't know if she posts every day but she draws every day for three years so all right, guys, I got to go run down. My throat's really dry. I got to go get some more juice. I got to throw the, we had, again, we had pot roast in the, in the, in the crock pot Sunday. So I need to throw that, put that, take that crock pot bowl and put it in and heat it up for Hubster to have lunch. Then I'm going to show my Inktobers and maybe we'll draw, maybe we'll draw an Inktober. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll do that. All right. Give me just like two minutes. Okay, hot pot going. Another glass of cranberry juice. Okay, don't forget Janet streams at one. Monkey Island Madness, Janet M. Merle. Um, I never know her name. I always get her name of her channel wrong because I just have it in my bookmark, Janet. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'll show you my Inktober so far. Let me back out. Let me back out here. Okay. I guess that's pretty, could be just a little lighter. There we go. All right, so I'm going to flip through my Inktobers and then... Um, my idea today was to draw the fly. I hope that doesn't creep anybody out. I'm going to flip through all my Inktobers. Oh, let's fix that camera there. Uh, I'll flip through my Inktobers I've done so far. I have a fear of messing up a color book and completing my first serene page, the one called the Three Scissors. Awesome, Sherry. And again, guys, I understand that some of the color books are very expensive. 
And if you're afraid to color in them, at least make a copy of one piece or a section of it, the face of the girl or whatever it is. Make a copy of it and do a, some little bit of practice, so color combinations or a little blending. Make some practice. If you're afraid you're going to mess it up, at least, you know, make a copy so that you can uh, do a little bit of practice and then um, then go in to the new, you know, your new book. Okay, what faithfulness? The fly, faithful mess. Are you talking about faithful mess? Girl, I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not ooing on the fly. You are not ooing about the fly when your favorite show is The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um the out uh out of all the bugs a fly Ooh, okay well i mean i don't know it just that was the next one on my list it doesn't have to be the fly we can do something else but okay so here's the one i did yesterday and oh, why is this crooked wait a minute it's a little okay <clears throat> So this is uh, this is from the mummy. Uh, his name in the in the movie was Artist Bay. That's uh, so anyway. And I did get a little smudgy. I have to try to clean that up because I do want to make prints of these to sell. I do plan on November. Now they probably won't sell very well in November. They probably sell next October. But I want to make some prints of them. So if you see something you like, let me know. Probably going to sell them for about twelve dollars. They're going to be small now. They're going to be. Uh, let's see. Let me find uh, my Poe ones that I gave every. This was my thank yous for everybody that uh, support the channel this last 30 days. They're going to be about this size, guys, so you can see. Um, so, but if you like, and it's, they're on nice, um, nice, take, I took it to the um, office depot and how I picked out this nice paper. And so they're printed on nice, heavy quality paper. And uh, really nice and black and white. So anyway, I'm going to, I will be uh, making prints of these next month. So if there's something you like, email me. Yes, you can email me. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So I'm going to flip through, flip through them. Bride of Frankenstein. So all the different creatures. Fingooly, he's our, he's our, um, Saturday night scary movie host, Predator, King Kong, Cyclops, Gargoyles, um, Rodan. This is the girl. This is the, uh, I think her name was actually, uh, was it might have been Elvira in vampire or something like that in plan nine plan nine from outer space is if you know ed wood <laughs> i won't get into all that now but hubster <laughs> it's really campy cheesy and so anyway um and actually her waist in real life was even thinner than this i said i can't make her waist as thin as it looks in real life because she'll look like anyway so <laughs> but this was from plan nine yeah, I need to do a Medusa still, too. Um, yeah, so anyway, here's Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I did do two Frankensteins. So I did two versions of Frankenstein. But they're not on my Inktober. I might put one of these up on Inktober. I put uh, this one. I put this up as a pre-Inktober as a pre-inktober uh, sketch just to show what I was what I was going to do that month this month. So these are not in the official list, but I have my Frankenstein's Invisible Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you saw Village of the Dead. Yeah, I haven't done one of those. I haven't done a villain. I haven't done a zombie. Uh, let's see. Phantom of the Opera. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. She's like one of like she's like Svengooly, although she's on all kinds of other things now. But she's been around forever as a mistress, you know, a hostess of movies. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Uh, Dracula, uh, Nostra, 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 oh, I have to see it written down to pronounce it. Wait a minute. 
Nosferatu. <laughs> Uh, it, let's see, this one was, it came, what was this called? Thing from another world, thing from another world. Uh, not, uh, let's see, is this, no, this isn't Rodan. Which one is this one? This one is Gamera. Yeah, this one's Gamera. The one with the flying turtle with the rockets in its butt. <laughs> I didn't draw that part. <laughs> and then Poe, I think on Poe, uh, even though I've I've did him and I've already sent out a gazillion of these to everybody, I might post Poe on the thirty first. He's really not a monster, but I really like my Poe. I want him to be in the lineup, right? So I think I might post Poe on the thirty first. And by the way, speaking of Poe, I did uh, I have worked a lot more on my Poe book. I got all the text, the type text, uh, black letter font. I got it all cut and pasted on all 18 stanzas. They're all on the paper. I've got to ink all the edges and I've got to washi tape all those pages into the Poe book. But I got a lot of ephemera and stuff going in the Poe book. So hopefully I'll have my Poe book done soon. So here's my list. So do I scratch off everything? So uh, I still need to do Ghidra, Three Head. I haven't done Mothra. Um, the fly. See, I'm thinking I got the fly. We can do the fly on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Elvira never ages. Yeah. And let's see. Well, if, if you look at her, have you ever seen her without her makeup? Have you ever seen Elvira without her makeup? She has a, she has some good makeup skills, whether she does it or somebody else. Uh, let's see. But I, I do. I like I like Elvira. Uh, I thought about doing Forbidden Planet. Robbie the Robot is not really um, a monster, but that's kind of a scary movie. But the the monster was just like, a, it was almost like just a wave. It was like an energy force. And I'm, you know, I could just like, you know, oh, here we go. You know, oh, oh what's on the back there? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I did the mummy. Um Art of day. Let me just scratch that off. Oh, the other thing that I was I wrote down here is the uh, movie icon. So I did Boris Karloff hit as the mummy, but I wanted I thought about maybe doing Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, and Peter Cushing. Now they're really not monsters, but they're like the scary movie icons. So I might do uh, Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, and Peter Cushing. Um, that's kind of too modern. I'm trying not to. The most modern thing I really have here, I think, is Alien. No, Predator. Predator is probably my most modern. But other than Predator and Alien, I tried to keep it all old school. I didn't really want to do um, comic book characters or, you know, like the Joker and stuff like that. Not in this. I don't mind doing that sometime. But in this, I kind of wanted to keep it you know, these earlier monsters. So, uh, and then I have the Ray Harryhausen. Uh, I did the Cyclops, the Minotaur. Uh, I could do the Fighting Skeleton, Medusa, and the Centaur. Um, so I have those extra Ray Harryhausens in there. So anyway, I think I might just do, I think I'm going to go with the fly today, guys. I think I'm going to roll with the fly. I'm going to do the fly on the fly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So we have about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, something like that. All right. Let me bring up my iPad here. Let's look up some flies. Let's look up the fly. And, and for those that haven't been... Um, didn't see any of my other, I don't, I've only done a couple of things on Inktober on my show. Um, but I'm, I've already went through one whole pen. Uh, see, I already went through one whole big pen, but this is the one I use to photograph. When I photograph, um, my Inktobers, I like this one that doesn't have any ink in it because it photographs better than the dark one. Cause when I put this dark pen, on top of, you know, my dark, if it's overlaying on any of the clothing or anything, you don't see it very well. So I, I've been saving this one to use as a, when I photograph the pieces, this is what I use, this and a brush. And I kind of, 
I've been trying to kind of go with my silver one, but I don't really, it doesn't really matter because I use different brushes, but I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move some of this in the pose. Where's the brush that I've been photographing with? It's not this one. It's a silver one. But where is it? Oh, there it is. So this one is the one I've been um, photographing. I photograph with these two because I use my ink. I just use my ink and a brush and the pen and the ballpoint pen. And that's all I use. Um, well, I take that back. Sometimes I'll use my food aid touch, you know, this plastic because it's kind of an in-between size. So I might do a little bit of touch up with this, but the, mostly everything is done with the, um, with a, just a ballpoint Bic pen and some ink poured into the, um, poured into, uh, my little soapstone. Let me get a, uh baby wipe here and I'm just I, there's not you know I'll draw most of the time I'll draw with a pencil my blue line blue lead pencil um, <clears throat> but I challenge myself on this just to draw everything with a pen sketch it out with a pen why is that dark right here it's a little dark right there that's better so let me just kind of move that ink up for a minute and we'll sketch out the fly Okay. Yeah, a food day. Yeah, food day touch. Okay. Not her for the list, but Voldemort would be cool. Yeah, I, I'll maybe sometime I'll do, you know, something, some other characters. But in this, you know, I just challenge myself to do sketch with the ballpoint pen, ink with the, the you know, the brush and, and liquid ink. And uh, yeah, okay, so I got up to the fly here. Let's see what happens. His hands look like, like they just have oven mitts. <laughs> I mean, they literally look like oven mitts. So I don't know if I'm going to put the oven mitt hand. Maybe, we'll see. All right, so let's, <laughs> seriously looks like oven mitts. All right, so kind of just make sure that I can fit. Now, you know, the fly head, he's got this huge, ginormous head on like a human body. I'm not going to draw the body. I'm just going to draw the head, maybe the hand, maybe the hand. So he's got these big eyes here. And again, I say my way. I've been kind of doing, adding my own little touch to these. I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to do a fly portrait. <laughs> oh, okay. So then he's got these little, you know, got these little, and this is just the sketch. He's got the little, um, mandibles is that what they're called i don't know something like that and then he's got some kind of weird it's it's an it's an old school black and white picture from the movie so it's not very clear i'm gonna have to kind of make some of this stuff up <laughs> um no that mandible wouldn't be there that's not there the man other mandible it looks like it's from under this eye they look like well there's some kind of weird something under the eye there so what I do is I sketch it out. And if anything doesn't work out, it's just part of the sketch. It just, you know. <laughs> All right. So then he's got this one huge, big eye here. That's not quite that big. It's about that big, I think. Okay. So then he's got like the eye socket kind of there. Like this. And his face is kind of like got this triangle kind of weird thing. I don't know if he's got something coming out of his mouth. I don't know, maybe they're kind of pincher things, something like that. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is. I'm going to do it this way, whether it's, you know, like I said, that's why I called it my way. So nobody emails me and go, that's not the way that looks. And then they got all these little pokey things coming off these mandibles. All right, he's got this kind of fuzzy stuff coming around the eye here. See, I'm just talking it out. Maybe this little mandible horn thing. And he's got all these little pokey things. And then there's all kinds of pokey things coming out of his head. And then this is a little bit, let's make this a little more, more. Something like that. <laughs> uh, I know. 
help me, help me. Remember that? Okay, so now I don't know if I want this oven mitt thing. I mean, it's do I want that hand in here? Because see, then he's then he's he's got a suit, you know, he's got like a I want it to look like he's in clothes, so we'll put some kind of this will all be dark in here. Um, this all be dark in there, some kind of suit thing. You don't really see a shoulder over there. I could guess I could put one. You don't really see that back side of his body over there. Something like that. Do I want? Do I want that oven mitt in there? Oh uh, no. I mean, his hand looks literally like it's in an oven mitt. Y'all know what an oven mitt looks. like. Like this and then he's got the suit arm thing and he's got these little you can see his suit buttons there yeah, maybe something like that <laughs> little oven mid hands <laughs> all right there's my there's my sketch now we ink it <laughs> go to a wedding <laughs> this is a bride of frankenstein all right. Now his other he's got another hand back here in the picture, both of his oven mid hands. But I don't want that other hand back there because it's going to interfere with this. I don't want that in there. So we're just going to go with that. And again, I'm not sure if I want this like that. Something like this, maybe. <laughs> all right. Let me take one last look. And he's got all these little hairs sticking out all over it. Um, oh, and I do occasionally use oh, the my white Posca. You know, like if I need a, a highlight in the eyeball, like in uh, Ardeth Bay, Bay, I put a, um, let me see, let me show I put a white highlight exactly where I needed it, or him, it doesn't matter. Look, see the white highlight? I go in there with the Posca if I need to. Where's my mommy man? I really like the way he turned out. It really does look like Bar Boris Karloff to me. So see how see the little white in his eye? So that's done with the Posca a uh, dot a dot of Posca. So yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Use what works, people. Use what works. But my my uh challenge to myself was to try to do it all with uh with uh, the uh, what do you call it? Um Bic pen. All right, so what do y'all think? Do y'all like his little um, uh, <laughs> oven mitt hand there? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get out the brush. Uh, oh, thank you, Jean. <laughs> you don't like monsters? Yeah. Well, I thought the old school monsters would not be that scary, you know. I thought I'll do old school monsters. They won't be that scary, but apparently some of them really are. You know, do I want that wide of a, let's see, let's go with this one. Okay, so I'm going to go with a flat, I mean, an angle flat brush and uh, a pointy one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I dot. All right, so let's get crack a on this. All right, so first I'm going to, and this is how I do all of them. And really, other than Predator, which I did here on the show, I did Predator on the show, and it took a couple hours because I did a lot of extra detail in that. But most all of these took less than 30 minutes. And some of them are better than others. You know, I'm going to tell you, uh, some of them are better technically done than others. But... Uh, you know, that's okay. I did I'm doing them. I'm doing them every day. I think I'm gonna do some of this a little sketchy right in here in the highlight so that it looks more like a fly eye. You know, a fly eye has all those little um they're not really circles, but they're kind of you know what I'm talking about. They have little texture. They have texture. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. So 
Same thing for back in here. We'll do some little sketchy bits. I want this to have a little texture in this too. So I'll leave some of it where I can put some, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, ballpoint pen texture in there. All right, and same thing for us here. here. Let's The suit, I'm going to color that all in. So, all right, and then up under his, he's going to have these little spiky things around his head there. So, let's do that. Look at all this mouth mouth stuff going on down here. It looks weird. <laughs> I'm not sure what all that is in there. Okay, so now I do want. Do I just want to go ahead and do it with this brush? I probably can. Be a little bit more stuff under that mouth. I'll probably put some white uh, little feeler things on there. I needed that a little bit. I'm going to have to put some, fill that in because I went a little too thick on that. Okay, let me go with my thicker brush now. Let's do a sleeve here. I'll put those buttons in with the white. It's just something like that. Okay. Now up in here, I'm going to kind of get some dry brush here. It's going to be a little bit of black on the back side of here. Are y'all still with the tour? Are y'all still with the fly tour? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's do some black right in here. Still buzzing around. <laughs> uh, he's got quite the texture. So I'm just using some dry brush here. And that's probably enough. The rest I can do with uh, the ballpoint pen. Oh, wait, let's do his hand down here. Same thing. Let's do some dry brushing. And then I'll do the rest with the pen to make it look like this dry brushing actually goes to something. Something like this. Maybe a little more. 
see the number one page here. All right, let me clean let me clean my brushes. <laughs> okay. All right, let's hit it with the heat gun. <laughs> Gee, that's gotta go in the wing nut book. Oh my gosh. Okay. So asking, I'm asking if still with the tour while inking the fly. Sassy Pants Jean says, hanging out on the windshield of the tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> on the windshield of the tour bus. Gene, oh my gosh. My, <laughs> my eyes are watering again. Let me get the wing nut book. <laughs> That's a good one, Gene. So if y'all don't know what the wing nut book is, this is when anybody says something like what Gene just said. It, I write it down <laughs> and it goes in the wing nut book, just random. It doesn't go, you know, we just pile them in. Trust me, there's lots in here by now <laughs> over the years. Oh my gosh, Gene, that's perfect. That was perfect, Gene. <laughs> okay, let's go back to drying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, now I've got, let me get uh, a Kleenex and dry um, dry some of the, you know, little puddles because they'll take a while to dry. And I'm trying to kind of blob them up so we can kind of keep moving forward. All right, trying to see. Oh, there's one right there. Okay, now I'm going to dry it again. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to take my uh, my uh, big pen, you know, my uh, ballpoint big pen crystal. Uh, what did Colleen say? I'm now envisioning that. <laughs> the girl who was vampire was called. Oh, okay, Ian. Oh, uh, you talking about Plan Nine? Her name was Mala Numi. Oh, that's her real name? Oh, I don't want her real name. She was Vampira, Vampira, Vampira in Plan 9. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I am going to, I think I'm going to take off my bracelets here. Hang on, guys. Put them in my little cup. Y'all going to see me, my hand, naked arm here. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to start doing, um because my hand's resting on this. And I like I like it to look scribbly. I want it to look like I drew it with uh, ballpoint, right? Well, let me see. Maybe I can zoom in a little here. Let's zoom in. Is it too dark? Oh, that's pretty good. There we go. All right. So now I'm gonna get in here and draw his very uh, textury head and, and I kind of just go all over the place like I just kind of work all over and just try to get the texture and the feel going for what I'm drawing it just kind of makes it more relaxed all right, let's go ahead and I'm going to work in his eye. All right, so here, let me show you. This is where I'm talking about where I would use the Fude Touch 
to blend something between the solid black and my line work, sometimes that can take a long time. That can take a long time to scribble. So if you scribble with the food A or any kind of, you know, like this is the plastic nib, plastic tip. If you get some of that blend already started with some of the scribble, it just makes it go faster. Say that scribble like that. So now when I go in here and scribble, it's not as, it doesn't take as, it's not as time consuming because I've got that kind of already started. So we'll see if we can get this done in a few minutes. See how that kind of helps blend? Did I do all this today? This? I've done the last 10 minutes. <laughs> we did this in the last 10 minutes or so. I'm trying not to spend more than 30 minutes on one Inktober. Although, like I said, last... Um, last week or when was it was it last week when we did predator predator all this little scribbly bits i did go ahead because it was all metal it was all metal uh and i wanted to really capture that metal look so i did a lot of the scribbling a lot of scribbling with uh the predator so that one took you know an hour and a half or something i'm not sure but i'm trying to do all these other ones with just 30 minutes Hey, Scoob. Scoobs, I showed uh, some of your drawings earlier, uh, but some of them aren't loading uh, for some reason. I mean, they loaded on my computer when I check my email. I check my email on my computer, but then when I go to show them on my phone, I couldn't get them to load. So I'm going to have to try to do. I did show the first batch, but that was all I could bring up on my phone for whatever reason. I don't know if it was because we had a group, if it was because we had a group, uh, you know, email where you emailed me and Janet. So I'm not sure. But everybody liked your uh, animals. And I showed how um, folk, you need to, you need to get on uh, Instagram and be a part of Folk Tale Week. Just saying. I know you probably won't do it. But... Uh, Okay, so there's going to be all these little spiky bits. Let's go ahead and do this right here. See that kind of thing? <laughs> you like the fly, Sharon? Um, let's see. Jean said, if you updated your phone, you may have to go into your email settings and choose to download attachment. Ah, maybe that's what it is, Jean, because I did. Two days, day before yesterday, I did the update. So, yeah. Because it came up fine. comes up fine on my computer. That's exactly probably what it is, Jean. Thank you. <clears throat> So I just kind of hold my pen way back, and so it's real loose and real scribbly, you know. Let me move down a little here. <laughs> folk, folk art... Um, it's the contest, or not a contest, but challenge, you know, just like Inktober. It's just like Inktober, but it's called Folk. Let me put it in again. Folk. Hashtag. Oh, what is it? Tail. Let me look. Hang on. Folk Tail Week. Is that it? No, it's not Folktale Week. What is it? Yeah, 
Folktale Week, and some people are putting Folktale Week 2019. And they have prompts. Let me see. Let me find the ones where there's a, here. Here's a list of the prompts. So Folktale Week is November. Uh, this one doesn't have the date. I think it's the 4th. Okay, here it is. November 4th through the 10th. Just like Inktober, but you're doing folktale prompts. Home, secret, path, smoke, darkness, key, and crown. I'll probably do my own sketches. I'm not going to participate in this, but I have ideas about it. So I'll just do that in my own sketchbook. But um, yeah, if you go to Folktale Week or Folktale Week 2019, you're going to see all kinds of very cool folktale ideas. So, but anyway, I just, it looked like you could, the, the your little creatures, your little characters and animals, Scoobs, it just looked like you should do that. Even if you just do it for yourself. It's so, it, they're, they're so cute. <clears throat> So he's got all these little spiky things, you know. We don't want to keep. We don't want him too neat. <laughs> I'll put a little white highlight on these little mandible things. <clears throat> nothing too perfect or too linear you know you got to keep it kind of messy he's a fly some shading right in here so i just scribble the shading <laughs> i'll do myself it takes me forever to draw one okay well, the, we like them, Scoobs. Uh, the first page. That's I couldn't get to the second and third one on my phone. Like Jean says, I think because of the updates, I need to allow attachments or something. But I saw them on my computer, and they were so good. Okay, so we're going to have some spiky things come out here we might have to put some of them in white so they show up on the black so let's just get that scribbled in there isn't this fun drawing flies <laughs> okay again right along that edge there i need it real scribbly so and i'm going to use this pen just to speed up the process just to get a little thicker line in there and then I can go in and tinier line it in. Just speeds it up a little. And again, it's going to have little spiky things on it, but I'll do that in white. <clears throat> now, if you want, you know, you could always draw around every little white spike or white area. I don't want to do that. I mean, I could, but it, I don't want to take all that time. So I'll just do it with the white. This is all shaded. So we just scribble shade. Scribble shade. <laughs> I love watching you draw. Oh, thanks, Scoobs. Shane is definitely different in ink. Yeah, it is. It is different in ink. And, you know, and when I'm drawing, guys, and this is, you know, this is just a drawing tip. And, oh, and by the way, speaking of drawing tips and stuff, Kathy Arbor is doing every Thursday at 1. I don't know if someone wants to put a link. Kathy Arbor is doing a little drawing tutorials every Wednesday. I mean, I'm sorry, every Thursday at 1 Eastern on her channel. And um, she gives homework, so just be aware. But one of the things about drawing, when you're looking at something and drawing it, 
you look more at, I am staring more at my iPad than I am at this. I'm staring way more at my iPad. I'm trying to, you, you just, and that's true when you're drawing anything. You're going to look more, you're going to look more at whatever it is you're drawing than what itself. Constantly, constantly looking at your drawing, at, at your object. It's got these like long, thicker hairs. Let me do a couple of those. It's got a few longer ones. And then the back, it's like he needs a he needs a little bit of a haircut back there. Got a few thicker ones back in the back there. <laughs> Some of them are kind of curled over too. <laughs> Let's just make some nice fuzz back there. You know, kind of like old man eyebrows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you just got to, you know, just just go with it. Just go with it. And you do you do a lot of them. You know, if you if you're always it, here's another thing, guys. Get your sketchbook, cheap paper, doesn't have to be expensive. Kind of bigger is better in my view. If you try to work too little in in uh, in play sketching like I'm, what I'm going to get to tell you. Uh if you work too little, you feel like you're like nothing wrong with drawing little, but draw a little on a big sheet of paper. Uh if you want to draw a little but it's better to have a big, nice pad of paper so that you can not be intimidated. So what you got to do is get a pen and whatever you're watching on TV. And don't and you go, oh, well, I can't do. Yeah, don't tell me what you can't do. <laughs> don't tell me what you can't do. Uh, and just draw whatever you're watching. A commercial. It could be a person. It could be a monster movie. It could be, you know. Uh, Halloween uh, wars, bake off, <laughs> draw those cakes, draw those Halloween, uh, draw those Halloween uh, uh, challenges that they do on that, on the Food Network, you know, that, uh, what do you call it? Um, Halloween wars. I usually don't, I don't catch them all, but I catch a few. And um, let's see, I think I need a couple of little, just some designs in here. Could just be something. Just needs a little something in there. Draw, you know, draw the cakes, draw the food, draw the ideas, write down the ideas, write down the ideas. Like, let's just say they have a zombie challenge and you see somebody doing, well, I don't want to use that because y'all are going to probably draw zombies. <laughs> Whether it's a color combination, just, you know, sketch down, write down your notes. Write down your notes. If it's a color combination. But if you work in a big sketch pad like this, it's much easier to uh, be free with it and not just sit there and diddly dally a tiny little fly or a tiny little something something. You know? Uh, I think he's got... It looks like he might have a couple of little kind of something, something coming out there. I don't know. I'm going to just put, I'm going to put some little stringy things. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm putting them in. Now, this one's going to, I'm going to do it with white. Okay. The, the thing's sticking out like this one here because it's on top of black. So I want those to show. So I'll put those in with white. All right. Let's get down here in his hand here. Or is this his oven mitt, as I've been calling it? <laughs> Let's see, this is maybe a sleeve or something in there. <laughs> so let's wrap this up in another 10 minutes. Don't forget, Janet streams. Janet, what are you going to do today? Are you still here, Janet? We take the dogs to Kettle Marine South these days. Oh, you're talking to Teresa. Okay. Uh, let's see what Janet's going to do today. Is 
it's really ugly and scruffy. I'm not trying to make this pretty, right? Just like when I did, here, let me show you a close-up here. See his face close up. See how scratchy and scruffly that is? Bleeding tissue paper and who knows? <laughs> is Eileen going to be there bossing you around, Janet? <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, I think that might be good enough for the scratchy bits. All right, I might come back to it in a minute. All right, let me get my let me get my uh, white Posca going here. All right, so right here, I'm I I needed this to be a little bit more, um, yeah, pointy or whatever. Okay, I kind of got carried away with the ink, and then he also had he has these three buttons on his suit, so you can tell he's wearing a suit. So I'm just going to do that. Maybe a little bit more definition here. Um, maybe a little bit around his hand right there. Is, or is that his oven mitt? <laughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is like how the, those have those spiky things. Something like that. Okay. And then he's got some more spiky things coming out around his eye. Not too neat. Let's don't make it too neat. Maybe a couple of darker ones too. Let's see. Something like that. All right. Let's give us little pincers, whatever those are. A little highlight. Sharpen that one up just a little. And maybe a little highlight on a suit here. I think that'll do it. Maybe a line right there. I think that might do it, guys. What do y'all think? Help me. Help me. Maybe a couple little extra. Just a couple little extra something, something going on. Highlights or, you know, because it's textury, right? What do y'all think? Is that good for our fly? <laughs> and I think because I didn't leave much room over here to sign it, I could either sign it in white. I could sign it in white. I think I'll do that. I haven't signed any of them in white. Okay. All right, let's back out. And there's our fly. There's there's our picture for the day. That's our ink total for the day. I might add just a couple more little bendy. I like those little bendy hairs. You know, they just kind of give it a little bit more.
just a couple more bendy hairs, like old man eyebrow hairs. <laughs> Y'all like it? Okay. All right, guys. Well, I think I'll go ahead and take a picture of this and post it for today's Inktober. And I hope y'all, I hope y'all got a lot out of the book show, you know, uh, doing a lot of books, talk, book chats. So, okay. It's, it's, I, my watch is telling me it's time to breathe. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. The insect word is probis, pro, probiscus or pro, let's see, probiscus. P-R-O-B-O-S-C-I-S, -S, proboscis. I can't say it, Ian, but yeah, <laughs> those things hanging out. It's not mandibles or probis proboscis. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. All right, guys, we'll see y'all over at Janet's at one. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.